Hello! Uh, hi everybody. Uh, I am here, once again, with Travis, the disgruntled elk, the, uh, hammer man, uh, and we're gonna do hammer things. Uh, but we're gonna do something different this time. Uh, we are not going to start off by just jumping right into a league. We will probably play a league today we'll see how uh how, how things go but uh travis had a, a, a neat little idea where we will uh kind of just talk hammer stuff talk positioning card choices kind of do a little in-depth like hammer in the current meta discussion um that i think would be really useful for people that are thinking about this deck right now uh, thinking about playing this deck right now and you know there there's a lot it's a deck that is not very set in stone for a lot of people and i think um this could help people make some decisions maybe on those questions yes yeah sounds good <laughs> yeah that's our, that's our <laughs> intro uh so uh hey eslin thank you so much uh where where should we start what are we thinking here's our, yeah here's so our um so we can talk like general process. Um, yeah. We can dig into like the the top five to ten matchups, um, and then kind of go from there. But yeah, so when yeah. we're when we're looking, and I put out a primer for this. I think it's free, um, but I think it was about a year or so ago. Basically saying like, hey, the deck is just quite good. Um, here's the core of the deck that should basically stay the same. Here are the things that are flex, and um, as long as you like stick to the core. You can change kind of a lot of the other moving pieces and you'll still have success. Um, this was before like Surge of Salvation existed. It was before Forge a New existed. And I think a couple other uh, less important, but still uh, it was definitely before the Solitude innovation. Yeah. Um, but it it really does harp on the you can have success with Hammer as long as you have a game plan and as long as you are playing like the powerful cards. Now I see a lot of people kind of drift further and further away from the core, um, which I think also lends itself to the, the worst results that hammer sees. Like the, the further you move from that core, the, the further you move from like, these are the pieces that really make the deck click. Um, and so, like, I think the, the biggest example of that is Esper Sentinel. I see a lot of people just, like, cutting that card. For me, Esper Sentinel is a core piece of the deck, and you you need a very good reason to cut that card. You can, um, you can see why people might not think that it is only because it technically does, it is not getting a hammer, equipping a hammer, or being a hammer. So, yep. you know, it, it, it is, it, you know, it makes sense that people could see that card and be like, well, it's not entirely necessary to the game plan. Um, but I agree. I mean, that card feels integral, like so important in, in a lot of matchups. Um, it's just so good, right? Like, so it's, it's threatening because there are a lot of decks where if they don't address it, it will draw multiple cards or tax their mana multiple times over the course of the game. Um, it's a one drop, which is just, you, you need bodies on the board. You need that. Artifact um, it's an artifact. That's yeah. It's an one. artifact. Yeah. yeah. It's a, it's, it's a, something that can carry a hammer. It's an artifact. It also has relevant text besides that. And like, there are not a lot of cards <clears throat> in modern that like fit that mold, right? There are not, not a lot that do kind of everything it does all in one little single white man package. Plus he's a little guy and who but, doesn't love a little guy. But what about three bit inspector? That's an artifact. A one drop draws cards. Yeah. Tr true. But that card's, bad right okay <laughs> so i and, <laughs> and it doesn't I, get and killed by is, bow masters it's true yeah. uh but it's bad gotcha. um and this is i am a thraven inspector enjoyer yeah so i i sadly come to that conclusion um but yeah like it is a one drop it makes an artifact um, I've seen people put a lot worse cards in the deck, to be mm -hmm. fair. I see people like main board burnt and forge tender, and I'm like, stop. Oh, um, yeah, I, I have seen that. I've actually, I saw that recently yeah. pop up, and I was like, huh. I mean, mm -hmm. maybe I get where that was coming from with, with Fury just running rampant and whatnot, but I, I've seen it like post Fury ban, and it's like, mm -hmm. man, even with Fury, I don't think that was a good idea. <laughs> no, because it's a bad card. But, yeah, um, yeah. Like that's that's the thing, right? Like, if you want to experiment with new cards, 
make sure it's like a, a fairly powerful card on its own or it has incredible synergy. So like Forge Anu is, I, I think, the perfect example of that where it's three mana, which is not ideal for sure, but it's so powerful in the deck that it will just win the game basically on its own at times. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so like when I'm when I'm looking on how the deck's constructed, um, it's what are the I evaluate like, all right, what are the top like 10 ish matchups I care about? Um, some people will ask, like, you know, how do you board against X, Y, Z matchup? The reality is if you're prepping for an open tournament, you want to focus on the top 70 ish percent of the metagame. And after you get past the top 10 matchups, you're just like very unlikely to play that given deck once certainly not twice unless something really weird happens. Um, and so you really want to build your deck in a way to prey on the matchups you'll play against the most. And I know that seems obvious when you think about it, but a lot of people are scared like, Oh, what if I play against blue white control and they chalice me? And it's like, the reality is like, that's okay. Just you'll sometimes you'll lose and you can't control everything. That doesn't mean you should be playing March necessarily. <laughs> that's the exact card I was going to bring up because yeah. like, and, and we can kind of get into the minutia of yeah. like, I don't think March is a bad card, but it's like, if you're just packing Very March because broad, potentially. Of, <laughs> yeah. Like, but if you, if your reasoning is like, Oh, I want to be good against amulet and X, Y, Z. Okay. Totally reasonable. We can figure out a plan for that. Yeah. But if your reason is blue, white control plays chalice of the void, then it's just like, well, what else do you want to cast March against in their entire deck? And so nothing is basically the answer. Mm -hmm. Um, and so at that point you have dead cards unless they already have arguably their best single card against you. And then if they have a counter spell, then you've, you've just done nothing repeatedly. Yeah. Um, just so making yeah. sure like every card in your 75, especially those 15 in your sideboard are carrying as much weight as possible for an expected yep. field is basically what you're saying to, you know, really make sure that mm -hmm. they are very punchy sideboard cards that are that are really targeting the thing you should be targeting and and you don't need to be covering every you know niche scenario um just yeah, accept that you, you can't you give up some points you'll lose in some areas or whatever but yeah. yeah um and so the other piece especially when you're building your I, so i like to think of decks not as a 60 and a sideboard it is a 75 mm -hmm. right um and so what I like to do when I'm going, okay, do we want X, Y, or Z is I will map the entire sideboard for those top 10 matchups. It's like, do I have the number of ins and the number of outs, the cards that are coming in post, uh, post sideboard games and the cards that are coming out? Does it make sense? And do I have a plan for all 10 of these matchups? And if I don't, then I need to make tweaks here or there. So it, it, so your deck makes sense because a lot of times people will say, oh, you know, we should add X, Y, Z card to the sideboard. It's like, okay, cool. First of all, you don't get to add cards without cutting cards. So what are we cutting? And then take the next step. And I encourage people because you'll just get better at this decision making if you practice. After making those changes, how does it affect those matchups? What does it look like? Are they still reasonable? Um, and are you comfortable with those matchups? And the answer is probably no. You need to go back to the drawing board, make those changes. But I guarantee that doing that practice will make you better at evaluating the correct cards to, to play or not play. Yeah. Basically being very thoughtful with your card decisions, <laughs> being yes. thoughtful about them, not just thinking <laughs> this card looks good, but thinking about it in the context of, of, you know, the deck as a whole, the matchups that it's targeting and is it doing something that is going to bring your overall win percentages up over the cards that you actually have to remove to fit it into the deck? Um, yep, yeah, exactly. And, that, and those are hard cards to find, man. Like, they, they, there's a reason why this this stuff is tricky, you know. And, and especially, like, this is a good example where I see this as a very tight deck list. There is not a lot of wiggle room when you are playing this deck list, right? Like mono white hammer. I think you got a couple of cards in the main deck. And right now, I mean, there there's really only a handful of cards that make sense in the sideboard. So, you know, a, a, I think a card needs a, a really good argument to, to crack into the 75 right now. Um, yep. I would agree with that. Yeah. Um, and, and there is, you know, <laughs> since I've been especially following your list and whatnot, I do have a nice little like, 
couple pages of a binder that are all like sideboard <laughs> options for when the meta change, right? I've got my strict proctors, I got my drain, it's I got like the yep. just the play set of different things that do occasionally make their way in. Um, but it's almost like a like a rotation of cards that just kind of shift around as the meta changes rather than like necessarily massive innovations each time or anything, you know, it's more these are the cards we come to when when this is the, the situation we need. Um, but yeah, that's definitely like, I mean, and that applies to any deck, right? Like that thought process of, of really thinking about what you're bringing in, what you're having to take out for that and, and really trying to map out your top 10 matchups or whatever, that's going to help you no matter what you're doing in magic. Right. Yep. Uh, I do think, um, like, I think decks like this are a little bit, I think it's more important to have those plans kind of premeditated than something like a mid range deck where it's just like, all my cards are kind of generically good. Um, obviously you want a sideboard map for every deck you're playing, yeah. but it's like, if I have one removal spell versus a different removal spell, it makes a, it's, it makes a lot less of a difference than, if I have, you know, an Ornithopter in my deck or if I have a Blacksmith skill in my deck. Right. Right. That makes yeah. sense. Uh, cool. Uh, shoot, I had another piece there I wanted to say. It, I, it, has, been, it has been lost into the ether now. I've been slowly getting a binder full of shitty white cards. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, welcome to my my whole world. I've, I've got a page of mana tides now, and I don't know how to feel about that. Um. <laughs> I, I do own like eight or ten at this point. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's kind of the, the general thoughts on how I approach, like, what do I prioritize? What do I deprioritize? Mm -hmm. Um. If you have a really weird local metagame, then make your own assessments on that. But that's generally not what I'm, I, I try to, you know, lend my focus towards. Yeah, that makes sense. I remember what I was going to say. Uh, one of the nice things about Hammer is that the out plans are pretty straightforward, which is nice when sideboarding, like figuring, getting, like mapping your matchups and whatnot. That's one of the things I really liked about the stack. And I had mentioned this before, but um, it, it's it can be pretty easy to identify, like, this is a matchup where I don't want Ornithopters, and because Ornithopters come out, I also trim on my drums, and we're and there we go. Or, this is a matchup where Esper Sentinel does nothing, and boom, there's four out, and I get an easy four in, or whatever. Um, yeah. That is one nice thing about this deck, is that the, you know, the, the sideboarding plans, as opposed to just some other, some other decks, can be... Um, pretty straightforward and it's not too hard to get the that muscle memory of like how i'm sideboarding for certain matchups down you still like in the moment you know need to recognize what your opponent maybe is doing some specific stuff that maybe does want you know you do want to adjust your game plan a little bit but um for the most part it, it's a deck that uh isn't as hard i think to get those sideboarding plans down which is which is really nice that's um yeah um that's nice and the, the other the other thing to note there is, especially at like high level events like an RC, which I hear that one's coming up, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I will also play the player, right? So I'll sideboard according to how I think they will sideboard. So for example, um, against Scam, right? I think Esper Sentinel generally quite good, um, but I will trim the numbers according to how well I think my opponent really understands the matchup. If my opponent really understands the matchup, I will keep as many as possible because they will be cutting cards that are quite bad, like Orcish Bowmasters. If I think the person is uh, less experienced in the matchup or maybe misevaluates the matchup, then I am more inclined to cut Esper Sentinels because I think they are more that Orcish Bowmaster is a good card and something like a Dothy Voidwalker is less good. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. See, yeah. that's where you so, get on like some deep cuts. <laughs> that, yeah. That's where it's going to get a little, a little bit, a little bit more uh, tricky. <laughs> yeah. It's, but uh, that makes sense though. That makes sense. Yeah. It's kind of yeah, like, it gets, it gets uh, tricky. Outplaying each other kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It's fun to play those mind games. <laughs> it, yeah. Yeah. For sure. For sure. That comes up a lot with like uh, control too. Um, with some yeah. of your like control plans you're like how how is this person going to try to approach this matchup in game two and in that you know because you're a deck of answers uh aligning those answers properly really has to do with how they plan on playing the matchup <laughs> yeah sounds about right there you go 
Uh, yeah, so, so I mean, you, you said it a little <laughs> bit before, and that what, you know, uh, hey, you are pretty cool is saying. Hammer right now. Uh, mm-hmm. You were talking about how you, you had a friend that you were like, yeah, maybe uh, don't play Hammer right now. Um I mean, how do you how do you feel about Hammer right now? Just in general, to somebody that wants to play in a modern event or whatever, it's not necessarily a deck that they are, you know, already super familiar with. Is Hammer the kind of deck you would recommend to somebody right now? Do you think with it, with its current positioning in in modern? So, someone who, if they are not super familiar with the deck and the matchups already, I would not recommend. Like, it's not the deck that I would go, yeah, play this. Yeah, I guess um, I'm saying, like, if someone's like, hey, I want to get into modern, I'm going to pick up a deck, would you recommend Hammer right now? That so I would game. I would generally recommend Hammer um, because, it, I th- one, I think the deck is a shit ton of fun. Yeah. And I think there are a lot of decks that are very good in modern that are not very fun. Like, let, let's be honest, Rhino's very good. Yeah. Cringe. That deck is hella cringe. Living End is um, always the one that I think is cringe. Yeah. It's just like, you just do nothing. Like, <laughs> every you're not, match is just nothing. Like, you're not playing Magic with Living End, right? Yeah, like it's, exactly. it's like Dredge, where you're just like, I'm doing weird stuff. Yeah. Um, so, like, I wouldn't recommend a deck like that to people. Um, it also depends on their goal. If they're like, my goal is to pick up this deck and win the RC, should I pick up Hammer? And it's like, if it's two months ago, I'd say you could totally do that. Okay. If you're picking it up a week or two before and you had never touched the deck before, I would not recommend it because um, – and actually, if you want to pull up, like, uh, Goldfish, we can look at, sure. like, the top ten decks, um, yeah. and I can break down, like, where it's positioned roughly against each each deck. Um, yeah, I don't yeah. generally, like – when people are like, is this a good matchup or a bad matchup? I don't like um, saying, oh, it's good or bad because I don't think that's usually <coughs> relevant information. Okay. But if you're, if you're deciding how well a deck is positioned, then I think it's useful. Um so, like, when we're looking at the good and bad matchups, I'm sure some people are going to be pushing back on that, and that's fine. Um, I certainly have different takes on Hammer than a lot of other people. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, so if we're looking at uh, Rhinos, I think that matchup's, like, actively very, very good for Hammer. Um, like, it, it's very good. Um, and that's 15% of the meta. Uh, Scam, good matchup for Hammer, 13.5% of the meta. Yogmoth, hot take. Hammer slightly favored. If you build that it right, a and you hot build take. It. yeah, that yeah. is a hot take for um, sure. Because I know that's definitely one of the decks that a lot of people say not very good for Hammer, very problematic for Hammer. Um, but to hear you yeah. say it's actually favored for Hammer, mm-hmm. yeah, that's yeah, big. and and not like like not by a lot. Like I think it's like fifty five forty five. Sure. It's like very close. But I think especially if you're very familiar with the matchup and you understand <clears throat> kind of their avenues, especially if you understand what they can cord for based on what they have untapped. I think that gives you a huge leg up in understanding what, what you can do, um, especially post board. And we can kind of dive into that later. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so Merc Tide, quite happy with that matchup as well. Uh, mm-hmm. Amulet Titan is the one where I just gave up. Yeah. No, that's fair. <laughs> that, that is the matchup and, and, and where and I assume. Is, yeah. That is a matchup that, I mean, that's a pretty big percentage meta percentage to give up on. Right. Cause like you did have a pretty, legit game plan against them i will say like when we had the strict proctors in the board that really did feel like it gave quite a bit of percentage points for that matchup um didn't make it perfect (laughs) but it it did help um but yeah so just just deciding like it that's it's it doesn't help it enough it's not worth the sideboard slots despite being almost seven percent of the meta yeah, and so some of the numbers on Goldfish are a little weird. If you look at actual mm-hmm. tournaments, it's I would be surprised genuinely if Amulet at the RC Denver was more than five, six yeah. percent. Um, and if I'm just if I'm saying I'm good against, you know, eighty plus percent of the meta, I'm I'm fine giving up the uh, that matchup. Also, like you can just kill them sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that is true. Um, and that's the advantage of something like Hammer. You're like, I can kill this person very easily. Um, and if they don't have the right tools, then they can just die. Um, that was that was actually, this is a bit of a side tangent. One of the things we had mentioned, just really quick, um, before this was that uh, Spider Space, he was talking about what he wanted to play for the RC, and he's been kind of leaning towards blue-white control. And my one of my big arguments against it was like, man, but you just will get no free wins ever. <laughs> like, you never yeah. just get that, like, 
oops, you're just dead. Oh, you stumble a little bit, you kill. And that's one of the things I, I like being a control player for so long and then picking up hammer man that is a drug like <laughs> getting getting a, <laughs> getting those games are like sometimes you do just slam them for 10 or even 20 on turn two or whatever you know it's like you just that's mm -hmm. that's something that's so foreign to me and it's just so nice you know it's so nice to have that avenue where you do get to play these long grindy games where there's a ton of decisions but then sometimes you do just kill them um and having that, yeah. you just kill them built into the deck is is really nice. And I think a really important piece of, like, a tournament deck, you know, like a tournament winning deck is that sometimes you do just have clean games or they just die, you know? Yeah. Um, um, the other the other advantage kind of in that, <laughs> in that realm with Hammer is a lot of your games do not have a lot of turns kind of one way or another. Like, it is important to understand in Hammer especially if you're against like blue white control or something when you're dead, just concede and try to win the next games. Mm. Um, because if you're playing against blue white control and they have chalice and Teferi and like, they have multiple things going like you're sub 1% to win that game. If we're being honest. Yeah. Okay. And so just concede, move on to the next game and try to try to win out from there. Um, because most of your games will not have a lot of meaningful turns. Like, the, the, you know, the first three, four, five turns really matter with Hammer. And then after that, typically it eases up. But the advantage there is you get to really think about every line and every sequencing because you're just, like, not going to go to time. Or right. you, you should not go to time. <laughs> <laughs> you probably shouldn't be. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. It, may, it is one of those decks where, like, the... Um the turns and the decisions and all that are like very compressed. Um, yes. Yeah. Each, there's a lot of weight on each, each decision tree. Um, and those can be like super rewarding because of that, which is, which is really nice. Uh, and also super mm. punishing, <laughs> really punishing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, I missequenced my land. I died. Awesome. You're just dead. Yeah. The whole thing's over. <laughs> um, yeah, for sure. Uh, so living um, end, uh, similar uh, to Amulet so Titan, we, right? <laughs> No, so it, I thought so. Yeah. But I keep beating it. Well, that makes no sense. I know we lost to it on stream. And yeah. then also, if you look at the RC meta, I'd have to check. But like, I think it's like very close or favored for Hammer, which I'm very confused what? by. But then I realized like Solitude's an incredible tool in that matchup. Help, you also have Dranith Magistrates. Like you have a lot of tools in that matchup. Um, okay. So I and used to think Living End was the worst like, matchup. has felt like a very bad matchup, but... Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. But yeah, yeah. like I agree. Um, I think Amulet's like way worse um, because like one, they are a combo deck that is probably just as fast as Hammer, um, but also has Force of Vigor and Besage you and a lot of access to both. And then they also have the One Ring now. I think the One Ring is what like really made me just go, man, screw this matchup mm. because now they can kill you with Titan like pretty easily or with Dryad. So they don't even have to attack you. They just like Valakut you out. Mm -hmm. And then if you try to race and they happen to have the one ring, then you just lose because you get time walk and double ancestral recalled. And it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it, so yeah, it's like if I could, it, what, what do they do in like the, the different like MOBAs and stuff? If you could like X or ban one. one oh deck, yeah. Yeah. Be, we can like you know counter pick. So they can, or not counter pick, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't just say that. <laughs> yeah. If I could pick like one. one. Yeah. Yes. Pick. Yeah. And I don't think it's close. Well, um, it, ban that pick. It, uh, or, you know, the magic term ban, ban, <laughs> still just ban in just magic. Ban. Maybe just ban it. <laughs> uh, I'm sick of these cards dying for amulet sing. Yeah, it's true. It's true. <laughs> Uh, cool. Yeah, how do you, uh, how are you thinking about four color right now? I mean, I, I it's a deck that I've been seeing like pop up a bit here and there, not a ton, but it, it's yeah. it's kind of popping up again. It's another ring deck. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not happy about it, but it's it's like because you do just have like these very explosive starts. I think if so, especially these harder matchups, other than Amulet Titan, um, I think you can get a lot of equity from like really understanding and mastering the matchup more than a lot of other decks. Um, so like you get a, you get a feeling for, all right, when, when do I just have to jam and pray versus when can I just like slow roll? Um, mm -hmm. and I think once you get a feel for that, like your matchup percentages and your bad matchups, like four color improve a lot because when you understand, Okay, yeah, they could have solitude, but it's like they have to pitch a white card, and their white cards are all really good against you, like Leyline Binding, Omnath, 
another solitude to fairy. Like these are all cards we want to get rid of anyway. So it's like, okay, it's fine. Um, yeah. So Omnath, not happy about, uh, hardened scales, similar to Yogmoth, good matchup. Yeah. Uh, I think Solitude's you're more favored against there. Curse totems yeah, help well, a lot there. Yeah, it's the three cursed totems, yeah. like if we're being real. Yeah, yeah, those are brutal. We played against that last time we played, I think, and I'm, I'm pretty sure it went pretty well for us, I think. Exactly. I also, just like, you can just kill them real yeah. fast. Yeah. So. And they, and they can't um, do like a ton about it, really. Like, I, you know, they're not really a four stack anymore, and um, they have like, like nature's claims or something, but like, whatever. <laughs> Yeah, they usually have, like, a couple claims, a couple Besejus, a couple Dismembers, yeah. and then, like, Walking Ballistas are pretty much all they have is interaction, and you can Ballista usually can navigate scary, that. But yeah. yeah, so <clears throat> one thing, and I, I would drop this both in the Yogmoth and the Scales matchup, is, like, if they have a Yog or a Ballista with, like, or the, you know, Ballista ability somewhere, and they don't have the ability to block an Ink Moth, and you can go for the kill that way, just, like, Surge of Salvation, once it resolves, then animate your Ink Moth, and they die. So, sure. uh, burn yeah. good matchup. <laughs> uh, burn is like comically good with the yep. with the solitude search the salvation package. Yep. Uh, zoo is something that's kind of risen from the ashes a little bit lately. Like this was a deck that I yeah. that really fell off the face of the earth, but has kind of been making a little bit of a comeback. Not, nothing huge, but it's it's making some waves. I've been seeing it pop up uh, in, in some yeah. Of so so go ahead and click on zoo. Let's take a look at the list. Yeah. Let's look at uh, this fourth in the prelim. Oh. Okay. Uh, this looks about so this is, this is also something I like to do when I'm like evaluating a matchup that like, you know, I've against zoo. I've obviously played it a bunch, but um, if you see a new deck and you're like, all right, how do we, how do we evaluate this? So like when you look at, at this deck, right, it's got four ragavans, four wild Macaddle, bolts, stubs, I, I guess. Mean, well, Leyline and binding is not, it's not a, a one mana card until turn two or three so it's but like they don't actually have like they are mostly two plus mana spell deck Hmm. um and hammer is mostly a zero one and then two at the top end um also like lightning bolts tribal flames line up like really badly against 12 12s yeah and tribal flames also being a sorcery uh, mm-hmm. Also makes it pretty rough, <laughs> like not not the best interactive piece against you know against Hammer. Yep, exactly. Um, and if they reveal Gigantha, then you know they don't have Force of Vigor, Solitude, any Evoke cards. Yeah. Um. So, like, obviously there are the draws. Like, I have lost to, um, Zoo when they go like they're on the play and they go one drop into one drop stub your thing into, yeah. um. Like two drop, bolt your face, untap, double tribal flames. Okay, right. <laughs> like all right, sure. But generally, pretty pretty happy draws. with the matchup. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, yeah. So like this that's is wild. To see. <laughs> and so, so I will so say like down for hammer to be there. Well, if you look at the actual numbers, right? So scroll up. So the top and modern is a lot more compressed and focused than it has been in years. Yeah. Um. So you have. Footfall's at 15%, like Scam at 13 <laughs> Yeah, like, once you get to... Yeah, I mean, one, honestly, once you get past Amulet Titan, you see a big, pretty a big, big drop-off, off. right? Yeah, but I would still, like, I don't know. I, I would still expect Living End, and I would probably still expect some amount of four-color, and I would not be surprised to see Hardened Scales. And then once you get past that, it's like, eh. I, uh, but I, 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 I mean, I say that, but it's also like, how is Hammer down to this low? I would expect, I would think I would see some Hammer at an event, so I don't know. That kind of throws me for a um, loop. Like, how is Hammer yeah. in between Mono Black Coffers and Asmo food right now, you know? That's wild. So um, I have a couple of theories around why Hammer is so low. One, um, I, I think a lot of a lot of the people who were playing a ton of Hammer, like I don't play really Magic Online events. I just don't enjoy them as much as in yeah. paper. Um, and then like I know Happy Sandwich and Crusher both both playing many events right now. And so like the the people who were the best Hammer players are just like not playing much right now. Mm. And then. What that does is it creates that information cascade where, or the Twitter hype cycle, however you want to frame it. It's like people, oh, this deck is bad. Um, And then so fewer people pick it up and then it will continue to have worse and worse results. That being said, it definitely has a lower win rate against some of the decks that I would personally expect. But I think that's also because Hammer is a more punishing deck to play. 
And quite frankly, like, it's it's easier to play a lot of these other decks because, like, they aren't playing Ornithopter in their modern deck. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, like, I think there are a lot of pieces to it. Um, I mean, I, I am not worried at all about playing Hammer. Mm-hmm. Um, th- usually... I think I don't think there's a single event that I've done well in where people thought, man, Hammer's a good deck. I think basically every time I've ever done well, people are like, this deck sucks. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's where you want to be, right? You want people to underestimate what you're yeah. playing, right? That's that's a positive when, you know. Exactly. Also, one thing I've noticed is that uh, people, because I don't think there are a lot of very good Hammer players, people don't get good experience testing against Hammer. So they fundamentally misunderstand how their matchup is. So that's why everyone is like, I have a good hammer matchup. And then they die. Mm-hmm. Um, right. Yeah. Most of the time when I beat someone in an event, uh, unless like they know who I am and we just chat, it's usually like, man, I usually have a really good hammer matchup. Um, yeah, and it's like, know what they're doing. it's true. And it is one of those decks where it's like, like I've watched some of my friends play and I'm just like, whoa, what are you doing? Uh, and there's like, oh, I'm playing it out. And then they get Force of Vigor. And it's like, well, we could have sequenced differently and then blown out the Surge and then done other things. Um, but it is just a deck that's like very punishing when you when you get something wrong. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, exactly. Also, Hammer's bad. Just like Amulet. Don't yes, worry about it. These are bad decks. <laughs> <laughs> or is a Saga unplayable magic card? Yeah, so that's right are you sure <laughs> are you sure you have a good hammer matchup well i mean i even hear um i think it was it was one of the commentators at uh at ghent very good player but he he talked pretty <clears throat> boldly about how there is no deck better set up in the format to beat hammer than rhinos hmm. yeah um and so it was it was an interesting take. It was, it, it's telling of someone who sees force of vigor and thinks force of vigor beats hammer on its own. Um, and that's just like, just not the case. It's like when someone's like, how can shadow be good in legacy swords? The plowshares exists. It's like, well, it turns right. out if you're good and you're playing good cards in your deck, you can beat cards that are good against you. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't, it seems pretty simple. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> simple math. Yeah, but then of course, player unfortunately got bodied because they like missequenced, and they were also on the blue splash. Which man, spell pierce, don't play that card. Just yeah, play. I mean, that's probably something bolts. we should like talk about, right? Is because like sure. even if you just look at the thing, it's being represented by a blue white hammer build, um, which you know it's you see kind of a mix here. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, is there like oh hey, uh, so Slowbirds is actually my buddy that five would last night, and so now he has to play hammer at at the uh, RC. Oh, there you go. <laughs> And what do you know? He's playing the uh, the same 75 that we have set up. Mm-hmm. Um, so here's an example of a blue splash. You've got a couple of spell pierce, some Lavinia's, and... Oh. Yeah. I don't know yeah. about that. <laughs> what is this? I gotta turn my head here. Choose a card name until you... Oh, right, right, right. It's the reman that you can then silence that card. Yeah, I don't know yeah. what that's about. Um, it's... Is if that it for, was like, an Cascade instant thing, like yeah, it's for Cascade and also I guess Titan. <coughs> and for what? Sorry, Titan, right? Oh, yeah, yikes. Um, um yeah, <laughs> correct. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, we can we can touch base. Um, I don't want to I don't want to like dog on this person because they are they do have the the four Esper Sentinels, the four Pierce yeah. Seals, the four Stone Forge. I mean, like I, I'm not um, looking at this and thinking it's an egregious list or anything, but but you're just in the mindset the spell Pierce not worth it. I remember last time we spoke, you said the most compelling reason to play blue right now would be the Lavinia. Are you still thinking that? I uh, honestly no. I think Lavinia kind of sucks. Than you too. Yeah, <laughs> like. Rhinos has so many shocks. Yeah. It, it has so many ways to deal it's, two it's, damage. It's much better at killing Lavinia than it is at killing uh, Draineth. Yeah. Um, Lavinia is also like, like leagues harder to cast on time. Um, there, there are a lot of reasons. Like the biggest reason to stay mono white is play solitude. Cause solitude is an absurd card. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. And yeah, zero mana source. Like, I'm not sure it's pretty good. Like spell pierce, not an absurd card. No, um, good card. Like I genuinely, it's a good card. It's, is it good at this point? I think it's fine. In in like just in general, yeah, like it's a pretty good card. Um, but 
yeah, in the context, it's it's all right. Yeah, like or the one ring. <laughs> uh, it doesn't counter a grief. No, doesn't. Doesn't counter grief. Um, yeah. A lot. If they suspend the rhinos, it's not countering rhinos. That's true. Um, if you're living end opponent smart, it just gets force of vigored back or force of negation. Um, they're like. The more I have seen spell pierce being played in hammer, the less impressed I am with it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we're firmly so. in the just play white cards camp. Yeah, know. like your man is also just a lot better. Yeah. It is. That is true. So. Um. Okay. Hmm. And you got that. Oh, you got that sweet blood moon insurance. You know. <laughs> yeah. Just ten basic planes. Let's go. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So like. Uh, and we can kind of do a brief summation if there are like specific matchups people are curious about. Um, talk about like how those matchups play out. I'm happy to discuss that. Yeah, I mean, I think it would be I mean, even if nobody in the chat has a, a specific question. I I think one that should be mentioned, of course, is rhinos because that is one yeah, that sure. I think people um, similar to Merktide. I think uh, it is. <laughs> You will hear people say it is very heavily favored in either direction, you know? It's it's obviously not a clear cut uh is this a good matchup, is this a bad matchup? Um but you think it's a good matchup. And uh why do we think Oh I, I don't think it's close. Yeah. I don't yeah. think the matchup is close. Yeah. Um like I've done focus testing with my team and like I'm six and oh against like very good Rhinos players, and I think I've lost three total games. Yeah. Like Yes. I mean, so so um, so. Why do you think that is? Why do you think people feel differently about the matchup? I mean, you kind of mentioned the whole you know force and vigor thing, but yeah. Uh, <coughs> so I think the reason people so it depends. Like, so if people are just talking about the matchup, they're like, "Well, this deck has force of vigor and free some other free spells, so it's good against the artifact and enchantment deck." Mm -hmm. It's like. Yes, but four fours are really bad against six sixes or ten tens. Um, so like, and I do, I did a, uh, Being a recent update, like the constructs, like the constructs or anything six with sixes. a hammer. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I, that, that's yeah. where you're getting the six. Yeah, okay. yeah. So there, there are a few pieces, um, and I did actually update the rhinos v hammer like matchup analysis, mm -hmm. um, so you can kind of dive into that. But basically, it's it's a it's what I consider quite a good matchup because. Um, the first reason is our plan A, i.e. make large constructs or put a hammer on something, lines up very well against their make two four fours. Right. Yeah, that makes um, sense. Like, I've definitely had games where my opponent has resolved all four crashing footfalls and then dies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, and it's just like, because... You're I also mean, just a much call, more cauldra lines up good against them. Shadow spearing yep. things up allows you to race against you know certain situations. You just shadow spearing up a, a mid sized construct. They just like can't beat it. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I agree with that. Like just plan versus plan lines up pretty well. I think where people like you're saying where where people uh, would assume the matchup leans their way is that they have some interaction that potentially looks pretty scary for hammer. Yeah, for they sure. Do. And they, force and of victor do. is good against hammer. Yeah, it, like, it, it is. And, like, you know, previously they had fury, which was like nice too, but um, mm -hmm. they don't have that anymore. So that yeah. was a big piece that's now missing. Um, they have subtlety, which, you know, that can, we're a creature deck. So that looks like it could be, you know, pretty good as well. Um, a yeah. lot of removal spells, um, bounce spells, even with dead gone, you mm -hmm. know, that could be a, a low to the ground one, but then also one that can, that can deal with something that's got a hammer on it, all that kind of good stuff. So, um, yeah. and then recently, of course, they've had the additions of Tishana's Tidebinder in some yeah. number and some number of flame of Anor, and yeah. people are like, these cards are very good against you. And I was like, okay, they're expensive. Like, yes. They're three mana, they're right? Three like mana. so, <laughs> they are definitely they like. Yes, their text is good against this deck. You know, going for Tashaning a hammer that's being equipped with a pure steel paladin just nullifies that hammer. Like, there are situations for sure where these cards, like, they are powerful. Their text is powerful against this deck, but they but they're a lot of mana. They that is a lot of mana, um, and this is a deck that I think tends to thrive around your opponents trying to 
interact with cards that cost a lot of mana. <laughs> yep. Yeah, because, Hammer is arguably yeah. the most efficient deck in the format. You've got some good cards that stop cards that cost a lot of mana. Um, <laughs> Turns out. And then post-board, we have Blacksmith Skill and course, Mana Tithe. Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, and then, of course, Draneth Magistrate is just a gigantic beating. Mm -hmm. huge yeah turning off like their whole game plan they don't even have like the hard like i said with fury was i think something that mattered quite a bit before because yes. like, you know then they would just have like oh, i'll just kill you with a fury like i'll cast a fury and kill you they don't even have that mm -hmm. plan anymore um so that makes the you know the rhinos more important and therefore making the draineth even even stronger and exactly. also just a way they can't kill draineth now <laughs> uh, yeah it's like you just have a million protection spells and they don't have that many ways to address a Dranith. And so one one thing um, I do like to try to evaluate in these matchups is... I, so I think it's Jerry Thompson who, um, who like, I, I, I stole this from. But basically, he'll talk about people just jamming games. And they'll see, oh, who's favored? What he cares more about is the, the, what I think he calls, like, the truth of the matchup. And is like, all right, what do you have to do to win? What do I have to do to win? And where do those conflict? And then, like, how do I maximize one or the other? Um, and so part of that is figuring out who is the beatdown and who is the control. Mm -hmm. And against rhinos, I think hammer is the control. Interesting. So you are often yeah. going to be taking the slower game plan, ensuring you don't die. And presumably you will generally have the longer game kind of idea. I mean, so, so yeah, you almost always have the long game against rhinos because like your, because your saga sagas. constructs. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Saga yeah. constructs are so freaking huge in this matchup. Yeah. Um, and then Esper Sentinel is also like really, really good in this matchup. True. Um, but it's, it's a piece of the games I lose against rhinos are almost always, if they're on the draw, they have the gemstone cavern. And then they have turn one interaction spell, either dead gone or like a force of negation or something into turn two ice your land or kill your thing into turn three rhinos into turn four rhinos, plus like a subtlety or a force of negation. And it's just like you will lose those and that's OK. So what you do is you want to maximize your chances to not lose to those lines and things like mana tithe are perfect for that because they go turn two ice your land. You play second white source path. They, you know. Cascade, cast rhinos, you manatee the rhinos, and now they have nothing going on. Hmm. Yep. And then you just like go oh, untap, make a four four. Yeah. <laughs> right. right. So yeah, that's the the rhinos matchup more or less. Yeah, I mean, I think that is an important one. Like, I, I was surprised to see that it had now overtaken scam as is being like the deck of the format, but yeah. obviously with it, that's real good in that position. It's one to think about. Um, and then obviously following that up, I would say scam, probably another one worth talking about. What do you think about scam? You said scam's another good matchup. Scam's a deck that yeah. I, you know, I, I think it's also very easy to look at scam. Yeah, I'm going to actually, uh, I'm going to pull up a list. Yeah, pull, let's, let's pull up a list, see what yeah, they look yeah. like. Um, because I think that's also another deck that you, you could easily pull up and be like, Wow, there's a, 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 a Kolagon's command and and terminates and things that you know yeah. things that kill small stuff, things that kill things that have already been equipped with hammers, ways to kill hammer. Um, you know, obviously the the whole grief scam plan or bowmasters, which in reality is not very good against hammer. Most of the Pretty most bad. of the bodies are <laughs> X twos, but you know, occasionally it'll come up to like maybe punish a, a pure steel drawing a card or something like that. Um, but, like, one could see Scam and, and definitely be like, oh, a lot of these cards line up really bad. They got the HCA in the sideboard with more K commands, um, engineered explosives. Yeah, they have, they have a lot of tools, for sure. And, like, this is not... So I think the matchup was maybe better for us when they played Fury, which is kind of... Really? Kind of, um, yeah, because, like, oftentimes they would just, like, Scam a Fury into play, you Solitude the Fury, and just, like, they have nothing. Yeah, you would get some freebies um, that way. Yeah, now they play more of a mid-range game. That being said, matchup's still pretty good. One one thing to call out, don't play Sanctifier. That card sucks. Um, <laughs> like, so, because people are just like, oh, you can put a hammer on it and they lose. But That's the reality the is, yeah, so they, they kill the hammer. And also, if you put a hammer on anything, it's quite good. Um, <laughs> well, well, sure, but the idea there is that it is... It, it is easier to get the hammer on them, right? Like, 
Yeah. Yes, if you, if you do successfully get a hammer on anything, it's good, but these things all stop the hammer from getting on something, whereas you don't have to worry about those with the, you know, with the Sanctifier. Yeah. You can just, they can have two mana up, you're like, yeah, whatever, cast it, you know. Uh, obviously, like, the K command will still get you, but it's just it just gives you a, a body that, like, you can safely go for. Um, mm-hmm. But... Yeah, the the problem is also if you don't have a hammer and the ability to equip it, mm-hmm. Sanctifier gets raced by a grief, by a Dothy, yeah, the menace on by any is number of really things. Really frustrating with with Sanctifier. <laughs> yeah, um, it's and incredibly then, and, frustrating. And, and the graveyard element of Sanctifier is not nothing, but you know, especially with them, you know, they're playing things like Croxa and whatnot. The scam element, people will say, oh, they can't scam. And it's like, yeah, but it is on your two drop. And let's be honest, the scam thing, while it does happen mid-game two sometimes, a lot of the time that's happening on turn one, which means your Sanctifier is not going to be able to prevent it at that point. Um, so, you know, yep. the, it's it's not a blank piece of text, but it's not the most relevant. It's not as relevant as you might think in the matchup, I think. Um, yeah. For me, it, um, it would be more about the pro red black body that is, you know, potentially easy to suit up and, and get the game over with. But I, I can definitely see why it's just not not a card you're, you know, interested in playing right yeah, now. Absolutely. Um, yeah, it's just like, I don't know, play good cards. Um, but the this is this is another matchup where like Urza Saga is just so good against them. Like, right. It is so common for them to grief scam you on one. They take every spell in your hand and then you play Urza Saga on two and then they get raced. Yeah. And Um, and, and this is one of those situations, I mean, where, you know, you were talking about, uh, you know, trying to see how opponents would approach the matchup, like trying to read the opponent and whatnot. I mean, is it feasible for them to be bringing in their blood moon effects against mono white hammer because of that? So, and, and that's the problem because like every scam player I've talked to <clears throat> approaches it differently. So right. I always assume that it could be in their deck. Um, that being said, so like Magus of the Moon actively they should not bring in because we're also playing freaking four solitudes, right? Yeah. Um, uh, Blood Moon, they can bring in. That's totally fine. The problem with Blood Moon, of course, is they could play it on three and then die. Um, <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, they, they tap out on turn three, and you're like, all right, untap, play my third basic plane, Cigar Design Hammer Hammer. Yeah. <laughs> um, Seabass, yeah, for your, your question there, you can, you have the, op- it, it works in your favor as the hammer player. If they go bow masters with your draw trigger on the stack, you can decline to draw. Um, and yep. they, they will not get it. They do have to play the bow masters before you decide if you are drawing or not. Um, also if you if you have um aid in play then you can stack it to where the aid trigger will resolve before the draw so it's like very challenging for them to actually kill a paladin yeah uh yeah so okay i mean that makes sense when you when you like when you break it out really interesting to hear you say that potentially (laughs) potentially the matchup got worse for us with the ban of fury that is yeah uh, that is a, it's a, weird yeah, that is it's weird. very it, it makes sense like they do they do shift less uh like almost combo-y in a sense in more uh more like jundy and and you know i do think that that would be worse for hammer exactly um uh cards that are good in the matchup post board uh man oh, super good because they're they're a really they i think they have like 20 lands in their deck yeah 20 lands and a yeah. bunch of three drops um also, yeah, fun fun piece of interaction. Or something with a man of well, like, so the best is when you go planes pass, they don't want a grief scam, right? Because they, they're like, surge. oh, it's surge. They play Ragavan and you man it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is brutal. <laughs> <laughs> Though, um, also, and then of course, like, if we're talking post board, right? I mean, are they. Shit, are they even keeping Ragavans <laughs> at that point? Uh, I, th- I think they're supposed to keep some number for sure. I think the worst cards in their deck are like Orcish Bowmaster, but Cro- Crocs is the worst. And then Orcish Bowmaster, and then maybe like a Shouldred. Um, and I think you kind of go from there. Yeah. Okay. Just because Shouldred's four mana. It's yeah, so yeah, expensive. Yeah. Very, four mana, very slow. It's not like we're drawing all that many cards on our own that yeah. we're going to be, you know, we're not playing the one ring. It's not going to be like draining us. 
Um, yep, exactly. Yeah, okay, that makes a lot of sense. Um, but yeah, Manatai is great. Um, Surge is obviously absurd. Solitude's great because it breaks up their scam. Um, and this is another matchup where, like, similar to Rhinos, you can just, like, kill them on turn two. Um, but it's, like, pretty hard to reasonably do if your opponent's mm. smart. And mm. so you usually want the game to go long because Urza Saga, very good. Uh, my buddy Will, who 5 0 last night, actually cast two Amaria's Call in back to back turns. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I mean, they're just not beating uh, four, four, four angels. <laughs> Correct. That's awesome. Yeah, it's really I, I, hard to It's beat. weird. I think Scam is actually one of the matchups for me where that has come up the most, uh, hard casting mm-hmm. the, the uh, Mary's Calls. Yeah. It's um, like, whatever. Yeah. It's, it's, I, we're game goes forever. You, sure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. The game's going really long. It's like, all right, here you go. Yep. Cool. Uh, yeah, that's that's kind of my, my take on the matchup. Blacksmith skill you could bring in, but I don't think it's quite as good as just like having the surges. Um, I think generally you want to... So note that there are like 10 protection effects in the 75, the surges, the two givers, the two skills, and the two mana types. Generally, I don't think you ever want more than like six or eight. Um, and so you'll almost never have all of these in. What you'll do is you'll flex some in and out. Okay. It's interesting to consider the mana type as, as protection effects, but yeah, I mean... That is often what they are doing, I guess. Yeah. Also, like in matchups against Scam and things like that, so Scam and Murktide specifically, mm-hmm. Manatide is a lot better because you have Solitudes in your deck, so you can just like throw them in the trash when they get bad. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the old argument of, well, my card's blue, so it pitches to force in Legacy. It's like it can only, the floor <laughs> is only so low, I can, I can pitch it to force. <laughs> exactly. Pitches to force to Plowshare. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, we get we get the we get the same argument. Uh, all right, cool. Well, uh, I mean, was there any uh, any other areas we wanted to cover here? Do you think we should maybe send a league? Um, or what do we think? Uh, do you want to talk about Yogmoth? Oh yeah, you know what? That's a good one to talk about. That's a good one to talk yeah. about. Yeah, because this is one. This was this was your hottest take of saying it. You think this matchup's oh, yeah. like pretty reasonable uh, because mm-hmm. uh, man. It has not been reasonable for me. <laughs> um, yeah. And it's not even just with Hammer, man. Like, anything I'm playing, I've been really struggling against this deck. Especially since the, like, the the Agatha Soul Cauldron innovation. Bad card. I mean, dude, bad card? That card? No, I oh, said that, that card. card. Like, He's a bad card. I'm like, dude, that card is has been dumpstering me. Everything is a grist. <laughs> um, yeah, I've been, I have been really struggling good. against this deck no matter what I'm playing. Um yeah, that card's good. <laughs> that card does yeah. some really wonky things. Um, but you're saying you, you think uh, you've got the deck list in a spot where uh, where you're actually feeling mildly favored in the matchup? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so pre-board. So it's I actually, I tested against Ham and Cheese. Great dude, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, and so like it's funny because he thought it would get better for him post-board. And I felt the same. Mm -hmm. I thought it would get better for me post board. Um, He thought it would be harder game one because, and like, I think he's, he's probably right. So I don't like game as one as much because you have dead cards like Sentinel, which is actual factual garbage in this matchup specifically. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Cause they play all creatures, a bunch of mana and Orcish bow masters. Like this is so bad. Um, But you can just like, they don't have much interaction outside of, like almost nothing at sorcery or at instant speed aside from exactly Yogmoth and Tubaseju. Plus I guess they can cord for a Haywire Might if it's in the deck. Um so like you can just kind of cheese them out, kill them. Um obviously the the problems are when they're just like turn one, mana dork, turn two, either like two more dudes or grist minus kill your thing, yeah. and then turn three like Yogmoth if they went with the first route. And it's like unless you have like but even then, like if you're set up for the kill, say they they tapped out for Yogmoth, they killed your board, and you have like Sigarda's aid in play and a hammer in hand, you just like untap, surge, animate Ink Moth, attack, cast hammer. Yeah. And they die. Yeah. Like not a lot to be done. Um and of course, in case anyone's asking, you surge before you animate because then your Ink Moth will have hexproof before it is targetable by Yogmoth. Yeah. It will it will never be a it will never be vulnerable. Um, yep. Yeah, no, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yep. And then 
uh, post board, they usually have like some some good tools, like so Fatal Push, Haywire Might, um, any disenchant like Terra Sunder is pretty good. Yeah. Reclamation Sage, Force of Vigor, those are like the cards I'm looking for them to probably bring in. Um, go ahead and pull up our list real quick. Sure. So this card, Cursed Totem. <laughs> <laughs> it puts their sideboard cards to shame with its impact on the matchup, for sure. Like, if you... Yep. So obviously, yeah. Activated abilities of creatures can't be activated. And if you look at their deck, they have some creatures <laughs> that have activated <laughs> abilities that are pretty important. Uh, it turns off all yep. their mana. Does shut words, off mana. Right, which yep. just cripples their speed. Like, th that is one thing I've noticed with the card. Like, can totally cripple their speed and can just crush some hands. If they, they, they keep a lot of hands that are very reliant on those mana dorks. And if you just all of a sudden are like, all of them are, uh, they don't work anymore. Um, yeah. Very uh, effective. And then, of course, it, it also turns off the namesake card in Yawgmoth. It disables Agatha Soul Cauldron from doing, I mean, it still gets to make things big, but, it, you know, they don't True. get any abilities. Um, yep. Yeah, it's yeah a, so it's if you look at their 75, right, like, how many outs do they have to get a resolved uh, totem off the, the sideboard, off the game? So Terra it's Sunder the Besages. Oh, and Haywire Might. Terra Sunder and oh, Force. And no, Haywire Might doesn't do it. Haywire. Oh, wait, Haywire Might. I always think. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is yeah, still so a it's... reasonable amount of cards. They're right. Like, Force, Besage you, Terra Sunder. Like, they're, they're still. That's some cards. It's, that's not nothing. It's like five ish yeah that's not nothing um okay. now specifically yeah so rex age exists um oh, specifically they hammer actual rex age they have to because they have to beat curse totem <laughs> <laughs> is that oh yeah because you know what i have noted like well it feels like it's a card that has uh, it, it felt like it was really mainly popping up in hammer first but it has started to pop up in a lot of deck sideboards because of Yawgmoth's popularity. I'm, I'm seeing like a lot more decks. Oh yeah. Curse totems on the board. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so hammer, I think specifically is best positioned to use curse totem against Yawgmoth um, for, for a couple reasons. Okay. One is because post board, you have blacksmith skills and surge of salvation to protect it. Mm -hmm. So it just buys a ton of time. You have a lot of ways to protect it and having artifacts in play is just beneficial. Um, I heard someone, I think it was control for days. He was on the, the bolt zone podcast, which it was a great. Listen. Um, so I definitely check that out. If you want to get a good dive into Yogg, he commented specifically that curse totem is not an effective tool against Yogg moth out of decks that they want the force vigors anyway. And I agree. Um, like, so amulet Titan, right? Not great because they can just, force of vigor it plus they want to force of vigor anyway yeah. but because we have so many ways to protect the totem i think it is a very powerful tool interesting yep yeah, yeah so um, maybe an exception to the rule exactly um, um i will say yeah. one one piece uh worth noting and you know i i think this is technically a relevant piece obviously it is hitting them dramatically harder but do remember, Curse Totem is a symmetrical effect, and we do run creatures that have some amount of activated abilities, right? Like, I, it does technically, like, if you have Givers or whatever, they can't activate, and if you have Stoneforge Mystics, they also can not put things into play, like your Cauldron or whatever. Um, yeah. So, you know, just a thing to keep in mind that when you, you know, when you are playing the Curse Totem, uh, you know, the two primary matchups for that where this comes up most is Yawgmoth and, and uh, Scales. Um Yep. It does turn off. It does turn off a couple of your own cards. It is symmetrical. Um, yep. so, Luckily, yeah. we do board basically all of those out post board. We, so I mean, some fine. amount of Stoneforge are still there, right? But they're just like getting hammers in that case. Yeah, most so, of the time. Yeah. 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 Exactly. So yeah, that's a. Uh, and then yeah, so you have the the curse totems. You have the needle. You have the blacksmith skills. You have the solitudes to bring in in the matchups. You have just so much, like so many just very impactful cards in the matchup. Yeah. Um, and and it, it's. I think that is true, but it, it, when I when I go to play them, like you know, they're still games. It's not like these are, mm -hmm. you know, just fully lights out. Now there's no game, but I think they do give us a lot of uh, oomph. You know, yeah, I think it, it gives you a ton of percentage points, yeah. and so yeah, I'm, I'm very very happy with the configuration there. But yeah, so that's that's, that's where I'm at on the Yog matchup. Um, 
I think it's it's close. I I would give Hammer the Edge total if you take into account pre and post board, um, but not by a lot. Interesting. Sweet. Uh, um, worst matchup is Titan. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. just it's just Titan. Um, yep. Previously, some some other iterations, you know, uh, been playing some cards like Strict Proctor, which can be really effective against them. Um, you know, sometimes you'll see some cards like March or something to slow them down, try to kill their sagas or kill their amulets or whatever. Um, there's, it's just, it's just bad. <laughs> it's just a bad matchup. <laughs> the, the matchup. Yeah, every, everything they do is bad. It's just a bad matchup. They, they're, it's, yeah. Yeah. Not good. <laughs> yeah. It, it's Hope like, it's honestly, it. it's like, yeah. Dodge. Do, dodge the matchup. Um, mm. yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, um, yeah. If there are any questions in chat, happy to answer them. But otherwise, yeah, we can we can jump in. Yeah, yeah. Why don't we get some Why don't we get some games in? Um, yeah. If you guys, you know, like like we've been doing, um, you know, feel free to ask any any questions you have about the deck, and I'm sure Travis would be happy to uh, answer them. Uh, yeah. We are going to play that uh, seventy five you saw earlier. Um, we got the mana tides in the board, and uh, we got those curse totems ready for all those yog opponents. Yeah, this looks good. Sweet. Let's uh, let's hop in. This was our <laughs> right before we started the stream. Um, we changed. Uh, nope. Uh, we changed no cards from our uh, the uh, the January list. <laughs> yep. So we just kind of took the January list. Renamed it February <laughs> list, <laughs> and we're like, "All right, cool, 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 <laughs> good to go." Yeah, it did change between when I posted the list, but like yeah, we had already yeah. made those changes, we and then them. yeah, my 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 friends and I, I think uh, one of my buddies who's been playing a lot of Hammer recently, he he's always been quite good. He's he's a very good player, but yeah, he's he like five would one league, and then I think he four one like six other leagues. Oh wow. Yeah, it's like, so it is very hard for me when people are like, deck sucks, and I'm just like, I don't know, we keep, like, beating the crap out of people, I mean, so. that's the thing, though, it's like, you know, let them, let them, let them think it, right? Like, that, it really is, that is a very sweet spot to be in, is the general consensus being your deck is bad, especially when it's a deck like Hammer, where your matchups get a lot better when people are not prepping their sideboards for Hammer, right? Like, when people yep. are not respecting Hammer, it I think it does get a lot better for Hammer. Yeah, I agree because there are very impactful sideboard cards. There are like some. There are some strong ones. Um, now, yeah, like I see the amulet lists. Yeah, a lot of them. I think it's the the red amulet that Canister had been playing. Like I think it has zero force of vigors. Red amulet. Oh my god. Yeah. So like he's leaning into if I get Blood Moon, my deck still works. What? Basically, I don't know anything yeah. about this. Oh, oh and, no! And that sounds like a monstrosity. Pretty rad. Yeah. I'll leave it to Canister. <laughs> right, yeah, true. <laughs> I were playing against uh, Enduring Idealist. Hey. A buddy. Uh, okay, I was like, do you, do you actually know them? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He normally, I, based by his name, obviously, normally plays uh, Enchantress. Uh, but I believe, I'm trying to remember what he's been playing. I think he play, he's been playing some kind of Cascade variant in modern i want to say maybe like the warp world one i'm trying to remember what he's been okay doing. well that's why we got those uh manatees and tyrannus yeah i i could be wrong but i think that's what he had been playing um okay well i uh don't like this hand if we were on the play i would probably be keeping this really but we're not yeah because you just go like turn guess, one yeah, okay aid. okay you just lean to the saga turn one aid turn yeah. to saga go turn three make it do turn four probably you know smash them okay yeah uh, exactly. but yeah on the draw that's just gotta be too slow yeah i would agree yeah uh, mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. well i think i'm keeping it you throw back like a planes i mean i'd throw back the call um sure so let's and so people are like oh how do you decide to keep your mole it's like well if i'm not sure so if the hand isn't just immediately absurd mm -hmm. um i look and go all right what do my first two to three turns look like i sequence those out and if it seems good enough i keep and if it doesn't seem good enough i'm mulligan so <coughs> it's probably turn one 
it's depending on what they do, we either hold the hammer or we play planes hammer. Mm -hmm. And then turn two, we play paladin. Turn three, ink this hand. Yeah, it's like really slow. It's real. It's 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 basically as yeah. slow as the last one. Yeah, yeah. Pretty we close. throw it back. Yeah. Oh, I like this hand. <laughs> it's it's not like my favorite hand, but no, yeah, it's it totally doesn't equip. Fine. So like it doesn't have an equipper ready to go, but I do right. think it is something we're interested in, um, and it's potentially yeah. doing something fast. Uh, do you like keeping this plan over a land and throwing back like? land esper sentinel here so i'm definitely not throwing back a land because that's our most stable mana right okay well that's um, what i was wondering like just to have yeah. the explosivity of like turn one ornithopter drum esper sentinel into the yeah. stone forge uh, so this is definitely an instance where knowing what they're playing changes quite a bit what we keep yeah. um i think i just like keeping the sentinels um and bottoming probably ornithopter drum yeah yep yeah i think that's reasonable if we're going to get rid yeah. of one of them, I think it makes sense to get rid of the other two. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah. On, on six, I just keep the drum and then just go like turn one, sentinel, yeah. turn two, drum, second sentinel. Uh, okay. It, it might, he might just be playing Enchantress today. He is, it looks like. Uh, okay. Right. Well, sentinels are pretty decent there. Hey, that's okay. Pretty yeah. Card. I definitely so. want to get the sentinel down. Yeah, it's certainly sentinel. Yeah. Yeah, and of course we play out the planes instead of the Agonjo because Agonjo has utility and planes does not. Yep. Pretty pretty easy. And uh, even a bonus on top of that, uh, Enchantress tends to be a Blood Moon deck. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, Sentinel not looking great. <laughs> not looking its best. Okay. Um, okay. So... So what are you thinking? I, so I don't love exposing Sigarda's aid uh, before right. it's going to be used. So that makes me kind of just want to stone forge for a hammer here. Yeah. Like we don't want to get forge uh, Cauldra anyway, right? Because right. he's probably has a bunch of answers to it. Oh, yeah. um, I usually would like getting the Sentinel out, but because it's so lit, like unlikely to actually do anything. This I like just using all our mana. Yeah. Yeah. Currently only two. <laughs> Currently, yeah, yeah. But it makes a lot of his plays next turn potentially zero mana plays yeah. effectively. Um, send the message. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Fair. Fair. Well played, well played. Yeah. So if you were going to attack, you definitely attack before playing the Stoneforge. Of course. Like, it doesn't matter. Because they could fear, like, blacksmith skill pump. <laughs> <laughs> but then the message wouldn't be sent. You know no, I mean? th then they take the damage, and the yeah. message has, like, you, you got the free damage. <laughs> like, and you hit them with the LOL if you right, get through right, right. for the one. Okay, this is, right. a, uh, this is a pretty ideal start from the Enchantress deck. Mm -hmm. For those of you that don't know, I am a big Enchantress fan. <laughs> I'm a big enchantress enjoyer. I am an enchantress enjoyer <laughs> big time. Okay. And this is uh definitely what he wants. This is like an extremely oh, yeah. ideal start. Yep. Do you want to pay? If we're drawing mm -hmm. a card here, that's terrifying. <laughs> I know. It's like what else do they have? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. 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 Yep. All right. I hate it here. <laughs> Ultimately, they're going to be trying to assemble a lock. Yeah. Uh, with uh, solitary confinement. Oh, interesting. Very interesting. Um, wow. I mean, I think you just play Ink Moth, aid off the Iganjo, and then attack. If they block, absolutely just just hammer to kill their thing. Um, but if they don't, I think you just let it go. So you said, wait, wait, sorry, you said, 
We're going to play so you just, Ink Moth. Yeah, you play it. Yeah. Play Aid. Uh, off the Iganjo. Off the Iganjo, sure. Are you. Yeah, always have your non basics. Yeah. Are you interested in preemptively playing the Sentinel as well? Um, I don't think so because it, it hides what we have. Because this. Okay. Because by not playing Sentinel, it, it represents two hammers. Two hammers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, true. yeah. So I think we just shove with both here. Honestly, if they, they don't, here, well, you know, we they, kill it. Yeah, I was gonna say they can't. Um, I guess they can't binding here. Cause this so I'm, 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 I think we do put the hammer in right now. Okay. Yeah. I'm just gonna throw it on the S for Sentinel, of course. Yeah, because drawing cards is rad. That's so cool. And then I would just play out the Sentinel here as well. I think. Agreed. Okay. Now, if they're answering okay. our Sentinel, a good chance that we'll be drawing a card with it. Um, they do have eight. Oh. Yeah, they just go get the confinement they now. Get the confinement, yep. Three cards mm -hmm. in hand, confinement, drawing them up to four. Sure. <coughs> well, we'll go to four off the draw step, yeah. We will draw at least a card. Yep. They do have a lot of mana, but they don't have an extra 11. That's bad. Ugh, yeah. That's All right. Bad. That's probably game. We'll keep playing, but that is probably game. Probably. Yeah. Double Enchantress effect plus... Uh, plus. Mm -hmm. we drew like, they could brick. Oh, it is a thing that could happen. I was going to say, getting really good Denver testing in. That is an Ancestral Recall. That is why I like playing Enchantress. <laughs> because I sure do love drawing cards, and oh my god, Enchantress draws so many cards. It, it, that's basically all it does. Yeah, it is funny to me it, if it's it like... Prevents, it prevent okay. all damage that would be dealt to you. It, it does stop yeah. Ink Moth. Yeah, it is... It is funny because it's like, I don't know how this deck beats up Bowmaster. <laughs> uh, well, this does make it so they can't shoot your creatures. Correct. Yep. And this does negate the one life each time. So, kind of. True. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I right. um, oh, yeah, will draw a card, but I'm, I'm fine just, just conceding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. just pick this up. There's, there's no beat in this, yeah. this point. It's like, it is possible but i don't want to waste everyone's time okay what are we uh, interested in here needle for sure for and sterling grove really you're interested in needling the tutor effect on sterling grove yeah i, th I think it's worth it to have access to the effect huh I would not have done that. I, I playing playing Enchant like Enchantress was one of the decks that I like did a deep dive on when MH2 first came out. I was like super excited. I played a ton of Enchantress. Um, they, in my experience, like just draw enough cards, and the cards they're looking for are they are they're not singletons. They these are cards that there are a ton sure. of. They tend to just be able to find them without the tutor effect. Like honestly, Sterling Grove, like the tutor side of it's decent, but like the protection side of it was the more important part of the card. Um, sure. So I, I'm surprised I, to hear I that, but I, but I think we maybe have enough things that we yeah. could like, you know, potentially take out that it, it's worth having maybe. Yeah. But um, are you interested uh -oh. in the Solitudes? So I don't think so because of Sterling because Grove. Because of the Grove. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. And it's that's also, what I'm saying. The protection side of it tended to be the most important part. But man, if they just, you know, that game plays out and we answer their mana dude, or obviously the Sith is, but I, I would have saw, obviously, like, I would have solitude the Dryad thing immediately. That's a whole yeah. different game, you know? Yeah. So we definitely want the, I think, tithes, weirdly enough, on the okay. play at least. Interesting. Um, so we want, we want those three. And then if we have more cards we want to cut, then we can come back to the well. Um, but I think we want to be very streamlined, very aggressive here. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think about Spear? Shadow Spear giving Trample is very relevant. I will say okay. that. Um, I think Giver's probably pretty bad. 
Yeah, yeah, because they can go after our artifacts with their removal spells most of the time. Yeah. And then... <clears throat> I just trim an Ornithopter or a Steel Shaper's Gift or a Drum. I think those are kind of the, the other three cards I'm looking at. And it's probably a Thopter. Okay. Because being able to go turn one drum, turn two, two drop plus mana tithe is like really good. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we just want to be very, very aggressive here. So I'm fine okay. not this having is interesting. Solitude. Yeah, th this definitely is, is not how I would have approached it. Um, ooh, Snap it off. Oh, 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 <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I'm seeing a lot of things that I like out of this hand. Yep. Uh, I like and... just like Plains Esper Sentinel. Uh, probably an Ornithopter to start. I like the Ornithopter too, yeah. 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 yeah and then turn to 11 them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that checks out to me. A Dukin. Uh, say go. Your move, Yugi boy. <laughs> Do we get to draw a card off of your... If they cast a spell. Oh, yep. yes, we do. All right. Man, that card is yep. way worse when it says your opponent draws a card. Not as bad when the card they draw is called. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just try draw stone forge mystic. Yeah. Just think pause here. Yeah. Curious what they're pausing about. They might have uh, Force of Vigor mm. in their hand, which, whatever, we're not respecting it. Oh, man. Mm hmm? Mm hmm? This is a very aggressive spot. Wow. wow. Okay, uh, wow. give me a Surge of Salvation. Oh, this is better. That's great. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. So, wow. Ink Moth, Cigar is a pass. <laughs> Say a go. Yeah. What they pitch to the force? Yeah, that's a good question. But a growth. Okay. That card draws cards. <clears throat> Man, that really was a very aggressive use of force. Yeah, I think that was especially like since we Man oh man, if we could have manatized. I know. <laughs> Oh, I would have lost no my mind. Second land. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna worry too much. I'm just gonna sh bolt ourselves and jam. Yeah. Like, yeah, just whatever. Right. Doesn't Hammer. suck if he like doesn't does have the thing. I guess, but I mean, whatever. Like, I would assume he has more things, or, like, he kept a one-land hand. All right. right. March? Oh, okay. Sure. Honestly? All right. Yep. Okay. Your move. Pass. I'll take a stone forge. Yeah. I would, I mean, I would accept most bodies... Uh, any uh, literal any creature I'm happy with. Yeah. Sure. 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 That's a body. It's a pretty good one. Mm-hmm. Say go. I'll take uh, Surge of Salvation as well. Yes. I would not be against this. Yeah, exactly. Uh, hey, you're pretty cool. Like, when, like, it's very easy to just like screw it. We jam when you have another combo locked and loaded to go. Yeah, the only missing piece there was another body. Like, which, you know, is something we have at least a couple of in the deck. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. All right. Oh, is he just gonna find me? Can find me here. Yeah, we're we're both like I think that's what it is. Oh, it, it could be a presence. It it might be a presence. Yeah. Okay. It's a presence. Well, okay. let's uh, win the game. Yeah. 
So two of their three cards have to be green card force of will. Yeah. Or force of vigor. So I don't think we play the saga here. Just like fire up, send it. Yeah. Because we don't want them to, to tag the saga, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Screw it. We jam is, is definitely the, uh, the younger, more, uh, parent friendly version of fuck it. We ball. How about a second one? Cool. Okay, cool. <laughs> saw, saw the line. Yeah. Um, we want the blacksmith skills. I know. Now that I'm wondering, after seeing the Besaju, I, I can't imagine it's more than like one or two. Yeah. Well, also like <laughs> we, this. This can get us out of a lot of things. Um, I think it might be man better than Manatee on the draw. Okay. Yeah, I can see because they do just have so much one mana ramp. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just like, kill ya. Do you have the answer? They, I forget who it was, but they were like, there are no wrong threats, only wrong answers. And <laughs> I, I like that. Um, uh, yeah. I'm inclined to keep it. Yeah. But it's not great. Yeah, especially I, because, like, Cauldra is not particularly good in this matchup. Yeah, we can probably, probably go for better. I think we throw it back. Yeah, I'm about it. If we're on the play, maybe. I'm keeping this. Yeah. This is very easy keep. Yeah, th this card's good. Uh, you want to just, like, do you want to throw back a Paladin? Or do you want to throw back? Probably. Maybe? Yeah, we're, like, pretty choked on mana. It's not like they're playing counter spells, so. Yeah. it is. I am curious if we're supposed to drum or sentinel on one. I think if we don't hit a land then we play drum here okay especially now they played sprawl okay well now i like sentinel <laughs> <laughs> all right thanks for making this uh decision easier i i know they're they're not happy in chat that we had it but they did let us draw like multiple cards so also, they had Force of Vigor. Just and, saying. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that Force did feel like kind of a spew. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Into casting a spell and letting us draw. Wow. Oh, what? Just why? I don't know. I yeah. Don't know. Okay. So the next turn is going to be an interesting sequencing here. Wow. So I so I like getting the cookie into play. Yeah. Do you want to do so, some kind of like saga drum? No, I think it's saga. I mean, because we certainly could, saga we drum. Have, like, yeah. All of the that's what I'm saying. Like saga drum. Yeah, I I think it's saga drum play cookie, and if they force a vigor, so be it. Yeah. Yeah. But this means we guarantee get the mana out of the, the saga. I don't I don't think they have anything yet. <laughs> and I would just say that here. Uh well, here hold up. Hold I'm on. just thinking protecting from Besaju, but you you thinking maybe we go for the gift hammer here? Yeah, like what if we do just go for gift hammer here? Yeah. We could. Um our mana's like a little tied up. It's like they have to have like exactly the Besage, and I think they only play like one, <laughs> to be honest with you. So the the other the other issue keep in mind is if we if we don't gift now, we can't hold up skill next turn right. anyway because we'll still need triple white. So yeah, just gift for hammer now, I think. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, and so this is what I'm talking about when it's like it's important to map out your next turn as well when making decisions on an earlier turn mm -hmm. because like if we don't do that, then we might just like die. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we kind of need to get the kill reasonably quick here. Yeah, the, the clock is a ticking, as they say. Man, I wish we had Flicker Wisp. True, dude. Flicker Wisp, their their forest. <laughs> That'd be pretty good. Deal. You've taken our cookie. I don't have a land, or don't have a land. This is awesome. I love I love everything. Okay. Okay. I I mean I think we're just going Lingo. planes, paladin, hammer. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
and using the, the oh, saga, yeah, of course. The, and then we have the. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, okay, I like that. Yeah, just get it. Get a free draw here. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> okay, so the thing is, like, equipping against them right away doesn't matter that much. They're they're. It's way more uh, important to have this blacksmith skill, I think. So I think I, I agree. Next turn, they like, could it's have... to just always have skill up. And then next turn, just Saga comes off, gets a second hand hammer. We just cast Shadow Spear, equip it all, and kill him. Yeah, I agree. If they have uh, Stony Silence, so be it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Hey, you're pretty cool. You're right. Flicker with stocks are going up. <laughs> Get our ginger brew. Well, to be fair, it's so. really the only direction it could go because it's pretty, it's I get pretty much on the floor. <laughs> First of all, how dare you? <laughs> how, you know how many Enchantress players I've beaten by like chaining Flicker Wisps in Legacy? Yeah. Thank you very much. Yep. Congratulations. Not a lot. But like, <laughs> you don't know how many three. little kids I've beaten up <laughs> as an adult man. <laughs> First of all, I was barely 20. <laughs> I, I say this as, again, an avid Enchantress enjoyer in every format. Okay. Got it. So they don't have uh, Stony Sounds. Okay. Sure. We're looking good to kill here, honestly. Yeah, I'm liking our, liking our chances. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's go to our draw. Neat. I'm going to float mana. Floating here. mana is cool, yeah. Let this go get one of these. Mm-hmm. Drawing cards is awesome. Draw a card, yeah. Choose yes. <laughs> I'm going to quit. Yep. Yeah. You're going to force a vigor, and I don't care. Do it. Yeah, I mean, I guess because of Force of Vigor, we actually do want to equip all three hammers, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I would play the Shadow Spear <coughs> first, though. And if it's Seiju, which they do have up because of the Legendary, we can stop that as well. Um, and I think we play, play Hammer here before the call because we could draw another Saga. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sweet. That just GG's. Yeah. Cool. So, so when in doubt, just kill him. Just kill him. Just just kill him. Just blast him, you know? <laughs> anyway, I started blasting. Okay, what's up? <laughs> Missing mold. Yeah, the land drops was definitely brutal. So we were sitting there. We had a third hammer in our hand. <laughs> and also blacksmith skill is what we were obviously. We, you know, I mean, I'm sure we were signaling it very hard. But we did have one protection spell. In the event that there was like Beseju or Force or something, we were, uh, hope, you know, if it was Force and it's hitting our spear and one of our hammers, we still have another hammer and forcing the block, so at least the Sithis would get killed. Um, although, I guess if it's Force, we get to still force the one Save on the Shadow Spear, spear yeah, probably. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. We still get to just save the spear there. On the play, let's go. Cool hand. Pretty, yeah. pretty nifty <laughs> yeah. hand. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm keeping. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, for anyone who's unsure on why we kept, it's because we have a body, a hammer, and a cigar to say. I, I don't know what more you want. Yep. Um, It is tempting to play the eight on one. Three presents, blood moon, ossification. Yeah. That's definitely the tricky part with Enchantress I found in the matchups. Like a lot of your removal is sorcery speed, and that feels really rough against Hammer. Yeah, so it's just simple, though, right? are we playing I, mean, I, I guess if they're like scam or something. Yeah, so if it's if they're a scam deck and they take the aid, that's pretty bad. Yeah. But Sentinels is like so much better when you get to stick it on the play against most decks. Yeah, screw it. We yeah. Play out the the blade arm boy, you know. Yeah, just, just a a little guy. Why did I pick these, pick these planes? They were auto picked for me, but you know what? They're kind of pretty. Dude, you got you got to go with those white bordered seventh. Uh, seventh is my favorite set, you know. I, I don't. It, you got some good planes art. Yeah. 
You got good art in like all of the basics in seventh. My favorite Ooh. swamps from seventh. There's a there's a lot of good ones. Yep. Okay. Okay. What the fuck? Mm. <laughs> Wait. No idea. <laughs> what are we playing again? Uh, is it breach? Like, oh, like grinding breach? Maybe. Maybe. Oh fuck yeah, dude! So now we just like crank I them. Mean, they go to kill it. We just crank them again, right? Like, uh, correct. Just, yeah. 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 Planes aid attack. If they block, hammer. If they don't block, also hammer. also hammer. They. Certainly get rid of the hammer. Great. The hammer. Thick. And then oh, they're yes. dead to this next turn. <coughs> Go. I mean I think we're I think we're just going like cookie hammer. Sure, yeah. Well I think we can do anything really. I think the the world is our oyster here. They do be cooking. Oh yeah, you know yeah, what? I think it's, right. it's, it's breach. breach yeah. Wow! Good I didn't know call, what else. Dude. I didn't know what else. Steam vents, haywire might meant. Wait, does breach oh. do this? We're gonna find out. This could be a trash <laughs> for treasure deck. Dude, have, Wait a <laughs> Are we wrong? Oh, <laughs> oh, it's uh, it's it's uh, the thopter sword. Well, of course, yeah. Why well, I mean, we? <laughs> Dude, that's like them putting I, Deceiver Exarch in play, being like, oh, this is twin. It's one or twin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't say. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, yeah, oh, I like that yeah. drawing. Uh, yeah, I like I like just playing out Saga. Yeah. Um, and I think we play out the Sentinel here, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. You like Just like pre-combat Sentinel. Yeah. Um, here's this. Uh, you know, no, you want to just like dump the whole hand, like... I well no I think we <coughs> actually I think we just go uh, ginger attack. brute attack with both if they yeah. block the ginger brute then we kill them and then they die yeah and if they don't block the ginger brute then of course we just like hammer the ginger brute <laughs> yeah just go for the kill. They have force negation. Let us draw two cards. I'm like pretty happy. They ain't got shit. <laughs> <laughs> this deck's awesome. This deck's so sick, uh, dude. I love Amber. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Needle looks great here. Needle seems very, very good. Yeah, yeah big fan uh, and of I the think needs. maybe Mana Tithe. I could see them being pretty choked on mana. Okay, interesting, interesting. Like interesting. the other I feel, considerations, I feel weird bringing in mana tithe against an Urza Saga deck. Does that make sense? Like that they that it, it is reasonable to yeah. assume that they could potentially just like okay go with Saga. But we're sitting there with mana tithe, like, uh, and then by the time they've done all their stuff with their Saga, well now they have some mana in play anyways. Like, yeah. Um, it could, so I mean, let's, let's see what we're cutting. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think Sentinel's actually pretty bad. Really? Yeah. Okay. Um, until if we see more of their deck and it turns out it's good, then we can bring it back in. Yeah. But I'm like not super happy. Um, then I think <laughs> the old Gift is probably coming out. Dude, I love Sword of the Meek. <laughs> Do you really? <laughs> I love that deck, man. I played like Thopter Sword War Prison. Oh, oh, no. oh it's I so good. I hate that. It's okay. <laughs> play the bad ginger brute. We're even. Dude, I played the good ginger brute, man. That's the good art. Look at that it. That is a cowardly ginger yeah, but brute. Look at the colors, ginger brute does dude, not run beautiful. away from things. It, but look at the beautiful art, dude. It's just it, the well, yeah. colors. The colors. It's got to be beautiful to compensate for his fucking yellow belly. Yes, um, I agree. Oh, I have the wrong stone <laughs> forges in here. Um, no, those are absolutely correct. <laughs> <laughs> Um, actually, so maybe Stop Ornithopter sucks. Here. That's a lot. And like, you want to keep the there are, there are, uh, some number at yeah, least. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think, yeah. I think Thopter kind of sucks maybe. because they, um, maybe. so the other consideration is like some number of solitude. Yeah. I don't even think yeah, it's so that good though. Like, uh, what are we killing with it? Urza. Oh, Urza deck. Yeah, true. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I, I like two as a treat. Okay. Do you want to just um, miss? and then I, mean, do you want to I would cut I would cut a drum and just keep the the gift. It's fine. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. 
If we lose to fair sort of the meek, we're dropping the league. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's not actually fair, right? I mean, this is no, no, no. Good. I'm saying if we lose to a game plan where they cast sort of the meek, equip it to something, and kill it, oh. then, then I'm dropping the league. <laughs> Just plus squire, plus squire. Yeah. Um. What? What? Sorry, what, I, I zoned out. What'd you say about the hand? I mean, it's easy keep, right? Obviously, second land would be great. Cauldron hand, not great. But like, yeah. I'm I'm keeping that six every time. Sure. Just nothing. Ornithopter or one of off the top. Ooh, interesting. Yep. I mean, I like Sentinel it is. that then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, if we hadn't drawn Sentinel, I was going to say run out the drum here, mm -hmm. but we, mm -hmm. we did draw Sentinel, so, <laughs> so, so play that. Ooh. What is this? Thopter Foundry. Yeah, yeah, I guess the only thing they'd be putting in. We get a uh, or card. Prismatic Ending? It's Yeah, it's putting, Prismatic but, Ending, and they're trying to pay the tax. But why would they be putting it into the X there? Yeah, so that's that's why they're like, oh, correct this, so they pay the tax. I love when my one mana play trades for two mana. Yes. All right, we're just going to draw a land here, or a two drop. Uh, I think we just go... Hmm. It's interesting, because if we go Giver, it can play... It, it now can protect this to get a Cauldron play. Potentially the turn after, right? The Giver has a lot higher upside, so I think it's the Giver. Yeah. It is close, though. Um, like also, we, I'd rather the Golden Giver than the Drum. Yeah, if we brick on land, we're like, all right, well, here's Drum, here's Aid, maybe. Yeah. Weird land to see there. I think we have someone in chat this you need to ban. is a weird league. Um, Fairy. He yep. is always somebody to ban. <laughs> but he makes me laugh too much. So yeah. I can't bring myself to do it. Okay. Draw Urza Saga? Oh my god. I mean, run it back out, yeah. Uh, yeah. Alright. I mean, breaking on lands for four draw steps is like... I guess three draw steps is pretty rough. But them's the beats. Yeah, so they're a ring to fairy deck here. Freaking... Robs. Knowing they're to fairy, I'm I'm down to bring the mana ties in mm -hmm. for sure. Okay. It was them thinking yeah. about the Opter Foundry, I think. I think when they had put that blue so. mana into it, it was them and then deciding against it. Yeah. Okay. Deal. Uh yeah, I think it's just Stone Forge grab hammer here. Do you not or not ooh, yeah we could play the drum first yeah, yeah we just don't get the yeah draw the, up, draw the drum i think we need them but we don't have the protection up anyway right we sure don't <laughs> so it's it's fine uh grab spear oh oh i yeah. think you said grab hammer i did i changed my mind Damn. because i was like oh yeah there's a thopter you foundry in place shit do that <laughs> mid <laughs> I've committed to the thing you already said. See, that's why we got it. I was trying to set up the other thing where you're the one behind the mouse, but you, you know, you've got this laptop from 1512 that can't run. 1512. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, sure. Yeah. All right. Wait, these are actually blue, so we can protection through them. Yep, but we don't need to with the Cauldra, so... Yeah, yeah I'm just saying that's that's an interesting note. Oh, oh fucking bless. Okay, so let's sequence this out. Okay, or we're just playing our land first. Uh, oh, yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> no, you're good. So... I think it's, like, just Cauldra crunch the Teferi... Yeah, because there's no way we can, like, animate this and get this on here. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, so I think it's, yeah, it's just animate, or uh, activate Stoneforge, put in the Cauldra, crack the Teferi to turn on our, our instant speed interaction again. Okay. Um, okay. With the Ink Moth, yeah. I only have two cards in hand, so that's pretty sweet. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 
Hadouken. Yeah, and I mean, the combination of Hammer, Hammer, Cauldra, Sigarda's Aid, Surge of Salvation. Like, pretty good. Pretty uh, good. So they're going to prismatic ending the germ and we will protect with Giver? No, okay. They're just cool. All right. Sure. Do they yeah. forget it has trample? They forgot it has trample. 100%. I love that. Oh, yeah, it's great for us. Love, yeah. love this. That's so good. Um, uh, and I would probably play the eight out here. Okay. Probably yeah, with, with two cards in hand, the likelihood that we well, would so need this and this, like it's just a qu- it's just a question of if we're tapping the giver and the drum. I think we're just tapping the planes. Yeah. 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 Well, cool. I feel Resolved. like we're in a tremendous spot. Interesting to see green. So green is actually... Oh, hey, where am I? They did show yeah. us that. Yeah. What, are you not familiar with the Steam Vents Haywire might turn one play? No. Come on. Uh, we okay. We can surge yeah. that. We, in fact, can surge that. This is they awesome. Card in hand. I believe they're what we in the business call hella dead. Yeah, it feels that way. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. What is the best way to hella dead them here? Is it is it just simply suiting up <laughs> double hammer on germ with giver and surge ready to go? I think almost certainly. Yeah, yeah so they can make a 4-4 four, four if they want. And... We, we have uh, to use surge to protect from the bobble because we obviously can't use giver there yep that's fine though yeah yeah so let's go tap ink moth for let's go to combat let's attack yes yeah Yeah. any Um, any i think the first thing yeah i I think we tap the stone forge for the drum because it's the most disruptable mana we have so yeah you just attack with the so just the the germ then yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah. i think Yeah, so if they make a construct, it'll be a 4-4. Uh, okay, go for the kill. Yeah. I'm going to place this upon the stack. Yeah, they're probably like, oh, he can't protect with Giver yeah. um, because it'll pro colorless. And that's fine. Oh, they're cracking? What the fuck? Okay. I'm very confused. I don't know. <laughs> this is really this is really good testing <laughs> this is very good testing like they they can't sack the <clears throat> they can't even sack the construct to the thopter so that's be a non-token right so fizzle that so okay equip this and also have you considered 25 damage okay oh Okay, so that did the trick. <laughs> now, giving germ pro-, pro colorless is legal at every you level can, of play. You can give your germ pro colorless. <laughs> you will, in fact, lose everything equipped to it. Um, but you can you can give it pro colorless, and it will die. It is legal. <coughs> Good start. Um, weird yeah. matchups, though. Uh, I would not say that Enchantress into four color uh, thopter probably, four color yeah is the expected meta of modern but you know what <laughs> i'm i'm glad like yeah, we're still winning it's good <laughs> like, I, I like winning uh how dare but, you? Oh, well, right. hey you know i love enchantress just as much as the next person i love enchantress but it's still not an expected deck in the format <laughs> That is the nicest description I've ever heard of Enchantress. Dude, you have done. I love Enchantress. Like, it, it, I love Enchantress <laughs> so much. Have you seen my Sarah Sanctum, sir? Have yes, you seen? I have. It? It's beautiful. I have. Okay, it's beautiful. All right. Uh, so we are uh, we are two and zero right now. Feeling pretty good. Definitely some mm-hmm. some strange matchups, but feeling pretty good. Um, before we continue, uh. A brief, a, little, a brief break. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, intermission. Yeah, we'll do a little intermission here. Uh, we'll uh, we'll be right back and uh, we'll we'll play more magic for you folks. Right. Sweet. All right. Good start. We're gaming. Um, yeah. What do you think we're gonna play against next? Um, white, black, death, and taxes. No. Um, Ameria control. No. Uh, <laughs> Maybe Bant Flicker. Ooh, I could see Soul Hoarder her yeah, coming yeah, in. Yeah. Ooh, maybe I feel a like Soul Hoarder. In. Soul Hoarder would be a that'd way be a different sick card. card. That'd be way. Yeah. That'd be sick. Yeah. Yeah. Once it once something gets exiled, it stays exiled. <laughs> what is the worst matchup after Amulet? Omnath win rates against us look pesky, but on paper, I don't see why it should be so bad. Yeah. What would you say is the next? Would you say Living End? Or I mean, I know you've said that matchup's been uh, getting better for you, but but still, got to be on the lower end of things, right? It's, pr- I think, uh, blue white control with chalice is probably rougher. Okay. Fair. Ooh, we're playing against a good player. So this is going to be a we real are. deck. Yeah. Yeah. Um, probably. if I had to guess, it'd be like rhinos Rhino's. scam. Yeah. <laughs> probably rhinos. Yeah. <laughs> good player <laughs> playing a real deck. Rhinos. Flicker. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to message him. What the hell will? <laughs> I'm talking you up playing real fan. decks. <laughs> look, look, Enchantress brother. We have to admit to ourselves, okay, that while we both love this deck dearly, it has its limitations. Yes, you must, you must admit it. You must admit it. It is the only way mm. you can be at peace. Mm. You're thinking about this one, huh? I am thinking about this one. If I know I'm against Rhinos, I might keep it, but I think we can do better. Yeah. If we I, had a hammer, obviously, obviously I, I, snap right, it that's off. What I was say. I'm very concerned about the lack of hammer here. Yeah. The fact that we can't cast the Paladin yeah, and that's like, another poked, yeah. red flag for me. Hey. Um, it's not great. It, this, or it's not perfect, but no, I'm keeping it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you... I would say the possible putbacks are second Mary's call or ornithopter, right? I think it's ornithopter, like very clearly. Okay, is like obviously two make like bolting ourselves a live, twice a more live draw for the yeah club. yeah just just making sure you have three lands for the saga is like pretty important. Oh, true, of opinion. course, yeah, 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 of course. Yep, yeah. you ready to get scammed? <laughs> oh, <laughs> take both no, our white swords. <laughs> okay. It's it that it could be rhinoceros. This is this has been rhinos, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> if if we weren't sure. Yeah. I'm gonna play that. Love it. Um boop, boop. Yeah, because if we rip another uh land, we won't have to bolt ourselves at all. So yeah, just sentinel. Boop bop bow. Boop bop beep. Bibbity bop. Boop bop bow. <laughs> you having a stroke? Yes. Uh, I'm so tired of Tidebinder. Tidebinder. Oh, man. Tidebinder ruins Enchantress's presence, doesn't it? No, it doesn't oh. work on Enchantress. No, no, it doesn't no. work on Enchantments. Well, it, Why are you it, it to stifles the ability. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Uh, but it, it's not even that bad again. Like, it, the fact no, that I, I always fine. forget it doesn't work on Enchantments for some reason. Uh, that feels like such a weird clause. I like it when they dead our sentinel on two. Does turn two. off Sithis, that's true. Yeah, that's, that's true. Feels all right. Oh wow. All right. uh, I mean, it's just like yeah. Saga, so, what are your thoughts Stone here? Forge, right? Yeah. If if we had a way to equip, I would consider playing out the Ink Moth. Yeah, but since yeah. we don't, I like just I like Saga Stone Forge. Um, what do you want to grab with the Stone Forge? That's really interesting. That is really interesting. So, I would. Okay, so we can get a spear with the saga. Yep. Right? So I'm not too worried about getting that. We do already have our first copy of Hammer in hand. I, I think mm-hmm. it is just Cauldra. I mean, I, right. I think Cauldra yeah. stands nicely against... Like, I'm expecting next turn to be presenting Rhinos, and then we have Cauldra to contest, you know? We know they already yeah, so... have Rhinos suspended. Yeah. So there are a couple of reasons. One is because if they want to answer the stone forge for their turn, it means they're not putting pressure on us with the yeah. cascade. Um, and two, if they just pass, we can 
just pass back. Yeah. And then if they tap out, then we put the the uh, cauldron into play. the tidebinder, right? Yep. Okay. So and I am going to do it off the saga, I think, here. Yeah. Yeah, I like the ability because if they do decide to kill the Stone Forge, now our plan is, all right, make a construct, make a construct, let's go. Yeah, you know, I, I haven't been playing a ton of Modern myself at all. I, I've really been playing a lot of Magic lately. I take these opportunities whenever Travis is like, hey, let's play Hammer. I'm like, oh, yeah, dude, because, like, <laughs> that's one of the things I, I, I do really enjoy. Same thing with, like, with Spider Space. When, I, when I've got, like, the people that want, you know, that makes that makes playing Magic Online really fun for me, having the other people and getting to, like, talk things out and think about things and all that. Oh, interesting. Uh, but playing it on my own, I, I've, been, I've been opting to do other stuff lately. This is interesting. Yep. Um, so obviously it's resolving. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I I kind of want to put it on top personally. I mean, I I'm think thinking, we bottom it. I'm, okay, so I'm thinking like next turn, are, are we just leading into Saga now at this point? So are we just digging yeah. towards uh, like Paladin? Mm -hmm. Is that our yeah. thought process? Pal I bottom yeah, it? Paladin or just make a bunch of constructs. Yeah, I guess like um, the window of where we would want to actually cast this is yeah. not clear. After exactly what uh what did they pitch uh they pitched another subtlety a subtle okay yeah yeah that makes yeah, sense like i think it's because we, we've got our we've kind of got our mana taken up i guess at this point yep <coughs> and you know stoneforge can is a card that takes a turn cycle to kind of do what we want it to do in this scenario mm -hmm. cool yeah bottom and pass nice. all right do you have a Cascader as well? I would assume so. But if they don't, I mean, I pretty could see happy. a hand that was turn one to spend Rhinos plus a bunch of interaction. Wow, not even third land. Oh, that's pretty big. Love it. Yeah. All right. Easy life. I'm guessing we're getting tapped here. Yep. Okay. Sure. It's whatever. And we do find the Paladin. That's pretty big. Oh, okay. So, so like, well, so that's what I'm trying to figure out. So if we, we can take the turn to play a Mary's call tapped, but if we ink moth, then we can, one, I think we're just playing the hammer. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then we can go grab another thing, cast paladin, kill them with ink moth. That's, that seems pretty good. That seems good to me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to like yeah. cast this. No days in this format, bucko. Nope. Uh, I don't play this. Yeah, Ink Moth pass. Man, but yeah. And of course, if they is. if they have like land Tidebinder, it could be awkward, but I don't care. Yeah, so suspend is going down to two. Is that right? Or probably down to one because they suspended on one. Oh. Oh, their land has suspend too. Murktide, uh, sure. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Um, well, we can get interesting. A That's not all that good. Okay. Yeah, so we'll we'll figure out what we're what we're yeah, doing yeah, here. Let's see what we're drawing. <laughs> okay. Um so <laughs> I think I think I, Do we have well, so, we have enough to do everything, right? Well, so I'm trying to figure out if we can cookie kill, right? Oh. So we we float mana with the saga. Yeah. That well, wait, 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 I'm wait, not wait, doing wait. it yet. I'm just just visualizing okay. it for myself. So we float mana with the saga. Mm -hmm. That gives Cookie the sugar rush mode. Uh, we then can bolt ourselves, play Paladin, equip Hammer to the Cookie, and play second Hammer equip, and they die. Right? Yeah, we have four total mana. Yeah. Yeah. So they need well, to have I, force, I, or yeah, they need to have force yeah. subtlety here. Yep. Yeah. All right, let's go for it. All right. So Hell float, yeah. uh, ginger brute, yep. bolt. Uh, I would play out hammer for. Eh, it doesn't matter. All right, doesn't matter. I just play the pallet in here. Do this. Do this. Yep. Draw a card. Yes. 
kill you. Cool. Yeah. Nice. 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 Okay. I love the ginger brute wins, dude. <laughs> I love the ginger brute. They feel so good. They're so so good. bad news, we are boarding out the ginger brute. Yeah. <laughs> It's like it's fine, but it's just not usually what the matches come down to. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's, he's crafty. He's, he's, did you see that? He was dodging me. He's like, uh, can't touch I like, me. I like this card. Yeah, and the top four as well: the blacksmiths and the mana tides. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sweet. Uh, we are going to. So we talked about how we don't always want that many protection spells, right? So yeah. we're going to cut the gibbers here. Uh, some people are like, oh, isn't Giver worse than Blacksmith skill? No, because a lot of times they are interacting with your artifacts instead. And if you have a Giver in play and you just have like little idiots without a hammer, then their rhinos beat you anyway. So yeah. just yeah. cut the Givers. It's fine. Um, gift is an easy cut. Mm -hmm. um, and then I like cutting the like one drum, one ornithopter. And then one more card, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. oh, I'm trying to remember what it is. I don't think so. We'll buy vibes too. Um, we could also no, no. We actually cut all the ornithopters and then keep the drum because it plays better with the mana tithes and it plays a lot better. Yeah, you can just go like turn one drum, turn two Dranith, hold up. Yeah, anything. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, that makes sense. Let's get our mana under us. Huh. <laughs> huh. Yeah. I mean... It's... Middle to six. Huh? I kind of like it. Really? Man, I'm surprised. Like, we don't have... So, it's... so we have the skill, which is, you know, nice. We've got access to hammers, and we do have a Saga game plan. We could potentially protect our Saga from force using the Blacksmith skill, I guess. But... Uh, yeah. That's a well, lot. And, and then the Constructs will just beat. Because they'll be pretty big. If yeah, they... but, like... I, I think it's okay The Like, it's not... I think it's fine. I think the Saga will get there with the Blacksmith skill to protect. Um... It is kind of slow is my biggest concern. Slow, yeah. um, if we draw an equipper, obviously the hand just like really cranks. Mm -hmm. um, so if we draw an equipper, hand's insane. If Stone we draw... Forge Mystic would be pretty good. Stone Forge is good as well. Dranith is very good. Yeah. Um, honestly, Sentinel's good too. We have a lot of good draws. I think there are... Yeah, we have a lot of very good draws. I think we keep this. Make them like have a very, very good hand. Okay. Um, and I'm considering just playing yeah, Call Tapped on one. Game. Oh, love it. You want to play what on one? Call tap. Potentially tapped call. Really? But we'll, we'll I, see. see. I'm thinking we we almost just... I feel like it's got to be drum, right? Just to just because so many of our powerful two drops are so much better if we get mm -hmm. to protect them with skill. Yeah. I just I just like to consider the lines, yeah, right? that's fair. That's fair. Uh, yeah. Yeah, just plains drum go. Yeah. Okay. Like, I, I mean, taking the window where it's like, yeah, this could be the shot that we could do that. But I, I just feel like... It, this it just this already being in our hand yeah. just makes so many of our top decks really powerful. I, I will also say having the Iganjo as a second pain free white very relevant to the decision making. Oh okay, interesting. Yeah, I mean yeah, it is a matchup that can come down to racing and and whatnot. So mm -hmm. yep. Ooh, okay, spicy. So uh, now we just do we go? So I think we just Saga, then play Stone Forge. I mean not so Forge. Right? Uh, well I think. I think you I think you play Sentinel first, so you have your white mana up. Okay, okay, ready to yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah so you play the Sentinel. Yeah, and then you get to go saga hold up skill. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like having this not be exposed at any point that, that sequencing makes yeah. sense that this is always protected. And now if it's like if they force a vigor wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh. I'm casting the, the hammer as well here. Oh off oh, the drum. Okay. Off, off the not off the drum. No, sorry, off the saga. Yeah, I was like, whoa, whoa. You're like, off the colorless source, yeah. right? Because that would be so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> now, is this to preemptively grow our constructs? Yes. Okay. Yep. So, um, someone called out Fast Blood Moon <coughs> would be sad. It would, but then their deck also doesn't work. <laughs> so, oh, also, like, we draw a card. So, I'm, like, pretty happy. This is pretty easy. I mean, they mold to five. Yeah. 
Right. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's just So it's this is right. well so this is when we figure out if we can make max constructs if we play out the saga this turn. So if we play out saga, we can make a construct. Untap we can, but it also softens us up to like Brotherhood's end really badly. Yeah. So yeah, just think. Um, or yeah, just play the Ink Moth. Okay. And then uh, I would no smack. I no would smack. make a con make make a construct and then attack for one. Okay. And the reason we're doing this now Plays is around. to play around the Tachana's Tide Binder. Yeah. Yep. And then also now we have white covered still exactly yeah and that's why we did it in this exact order yeah just leaving no window right just leaving no window where it's tapped out yep um and so this is a uh this is the other reason where it's like really nice to have skill tithe and surge as one man interaction points so they're going to dismember here um so hold up in response blacksmith skillet so we draw a card Oh, actually, no, hold up. So the construct. They, they're turning the construct. Yeah. Um. So yeah, let's let's see if they pay. I guess. Do we? Yeah. No. I, I. It's gonna be pretty. Bad. I mean, yeah, I we like we do. Well, no, we, we do because we won't have mana if we yep. don't. So <laughs> there you go. All right. If they untap land, Brotherhood's end. We draw a card. They kill like mostly just a saga. Wow. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah, you got it. Okay. Um, yeah, I like making a construct here. Yeah. Make dude. And do you ever get, what do you like getting here? I think it's drum, like and very you clearly. Play, like saga, and then like play another Esper Sentinel, maybe. Or so it's or definitely saga Trump. Stoneforge. Yeah. What if we just like yeah, Saga yeah. Stoneforge go grab Cauldra? Yeah, I like that. Yeah, and then we can the following turn still, um, like we can still make a construct plus play the the Cauldra. Yeah, That's it's disgusting. like. Hmm. Just remember, there's no deck better set up to beat up Hammer than Rhinos. Right. <laughs> they did. They did brick off on land, which happens. Oh, cool. Hey, three zero. Oh. Hell yeah. Lovely. Yep. Yeah, I don't think it's correct for Rhinos to bring in Blood Moon <laughs> against Hammer, um, because one, their man is like not great, <laughs> but two, like it just it stops literally Saga out of mono white. And so it's like, you feel uh, like they, for think, them to be doing the blood moon plan, they need like a pretty good reason to do it. Yeah. In this yeah. I think against blue white hammer, you do it because you not only stop their, their blue cards for the most part, but you also like, sometimes their mana just doesn't work at all. Yeah. Cool. Oh, another good player. Uh, this is historically a scam gamer. Says yeah, last seen three days ago they they played it. Yeah, and they went four. Yeah, this is. Uh, I this forget is his name. Good. I just know that. No, I'm keeping this every time. What do you mean you're keeping this? So they scam us and then they die to Urza Saga. What? Okay, so in the event that they are on Yawgmoth, mm -hmm. you're you're still. Yeah. Feeling so if, about if, this if they're on Yawgmoth, you yeah. get to go turn one drum. Turn to Stoneforge, hold up, surge, grab Cauldra. Wait, and then, wait, 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 slow down, slow down. You said, if they are on Yawgmoth. Yep. We're drumming, and then... How are we Stoneforge? And then... No white mana. We, we, we oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Oh, okay. We'll draw white mana. All right. I'm <laughs> Great, I guys are on the same page now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The, the, the white mana will simply come to us. I got you. <laughs> also, a hey, mulligan. So, like... Yes. It's like we have 14 white sources plus three <clears throat> thopters. You didn't say lead on Saga, right? In ink Moth. Ink Moth. Drum, yeah. yeah. Ink Moth Drum. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Definitely not Saga. That's what I was going to say. I thought you... I thought you I... Things were thrown at me very quickly there. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. It is... I thought we were on the draw for some reason, too. Yep. It's Jog Moth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to play Saga. Um, yep. Saga. Drum. Drum. Shadow Spear. Yep. Yeah. 
say go. Mm-hmm. Any land off the top is insane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's pretty good. Here's the grist. I don't care. <laughs> you do it. I don't care. I don't fucking care. Put that wolf in the trash. <laughs> land. <laughs> oh, that like almost a land. That one stings, uh, dude. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. So interesting. Is it? <laughs> I'll let you think through that. I might just play another drum. Yeah, yeah. Like the holding up the surge by animating the ink moth doesn't do anything. Right, so. right, right, yeah. right. Yep. All right. Next turn we have white mana. That's like pretty exciting. We have like so much white mana next turn. So we had we had twenty three outs for a mana source because the the thopters obviously count. Yep. So okay, but in hindsight, now that you're thinking, you know, you said you thought we were on the draw there. In hindsight, would you maybe have reconsidered? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, th I think if it, we're on the play, I'm throwing this back. Yeah, I definitely just thought we were on the on the draw. Okay. So you thought we had one extra crack at finding that later? Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, and we could still just win. So it's fine. Eva, okay, still very much alive. Weirdly, <laughs> yeah. And we could have a needle in our deck, so they probably are supposed to s sack a couple things. Maybe not. All right. Okay. Okay, so we float for sure. It did not do anything. Um, I mean, you're just getting getting an ornithopter here, I would assume. Yeah. Even with drawing the planes, you think? Yeah, it's just additional mana. Yeah. Play planes. And then, yep, yep. Uh, like the stone forge. Off of tapping the ornithopter, do you like? No, just well, it's off the planes. Yeah. Fine. I'm just thinking like the planes with surge being a thing. Like I don't know. Well, I mean, yeah, we have double guess. white available yeah, anyway. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Go get a cauldra. Say go. Uh, ruler, we have definitely lost together. <laughs> oh, definitely no, 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 we've never <laughs> lost together. Okay. Eh? So, do, do you open with one here? If they sack another, we can then do the other, and they have to sack their whole deal to kill it. I mean, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. It also prevents a draw, I believe. Yeah, because it's part of the, like, they have one ability has to resolve for the other one to matter. Right. So, yeah, it also, we're discarding two cards to basically not have them draw cards. Oh, proliferate, sure. Yep. All right. Pretty good. Yep. Hella dead. <laughs> yeah, should I just come in? Should we just move on? Uh, well, yeah, we'll see what we draw, I guess. No harm in it. Okay, okay, we can concede. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, yeah, they, uh, all right. All right, so we're going to bring in 10 cards. Those not letting me drag the solitudes and the blacksmith skills. So those are the ten we're bringing in. Yeah. 
Um, we're cutting all these sentinels, the ginger brute, the givers. And we're cutting these because Sentinel just like its its ability doesn't do anything, and it's an X one against both Bowmaster and Yogmoth. And yeah, and it's like it can't even attack into a Yog because it's a human. Just an um, touch, one just one Thopter, one uh, Drum, and then the uh, as tradition demands. Your mic cut out right when you said it. The, the gift. Steel Shaper's gift. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it cut out with what you said, but you then you said as tradition demands, and I was like, "Well, it's got to be the steel shaper skin." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, this looks good. And so, one concern, my my test here. This is an important. My uh. Question. Yeah, I mean, we I, I definitely threw game one, so <laughs> it's not a good starting <laughs> point. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll see how the post board games go. Um. But one thing uh, my testing partners and I were concerned about when cutting this many creatures yeah. was it's like, oh, well, you know, we won't have fodder. But the reality is, like, the fodder doesn't really matter that much. Ugh. Yeah. Uh, can't can't keep this. You said can't yeah. keep this? Can't. Cannot keep Good. this. Okay. No white source. Which is what the issue was last time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh. <sighs> it's so close to being what we needed to be here. This is This is brutal. Three equippers, it's, no hammer. Double oh my the, god! This is rough. I mean, it's got to be go to five, right? I think so. Yeah. yeah. Seeing all these, uh, seeing all these cursed totem openers, and not finding the pieces we need. All right. I mean, okay. This, this, that's our plan. We keep this. Um, interesting. We have to put back I think two it's, cards here. What do you? What do you yeah. put back? I think it's bottom <laughs> hammer, bottom stone forge. Okay. Okay. I wasn't sure if it was like Either double stone or, forge. Well, so we, we're like, almost certainly bottoming the hammer. Yeah, okay, We could okay. bottom hammer and bottom either ink moth or planes as well. Yeah. I kind of like that better. Yeah, yeah. I think let's bottom hammer, bottom uh, planes. Really? The planes, despite the the paladin needing that second white? Yeah, we could bottom the ink moth. I don't That's think it makes like, a huge difference. I'm like worried about, yeah, yeah. I feel like it's supposed to be like this. You're, you're just, you're, you're trauma dumping. Dude, I'm, tra I'm trauma, I'm traumatized after that last thing. You're like, oh, trust me, trust me. And I trusted you. <laughs> never trust. <him. laughs> never, never trust Travis, dude. Uh, that's a yeah. bumper sticker right there. <laughs> NTT. Yeah. Never, never trust yeah. a Travis. They kept seven, which I'm not a huge fan of. Yeah, I don't love it. <laughs> okay, so they can't grist us. So yeah, we're just jamming Stoneforge, probably. Getting Cauldra on the first one? Ooh. That's oh. interesting. Um, I I don't think we're playing the Saga right now, though. I think we just go plain Stoneforge, go grab Cauldra. Um, and my body is ready for Legion's End. I'm just going to say it now Dude, so that people know I'm aware of that card. Don't, don't <laughs> summon that into I hate that card so much. Uh. <laughs> Do not wish it into existence, please. Yeah. Okay. Dodged. <laughs> Absolutely dodged. So now we just need to draw a protection spell and we're like in very, very good shape. Sure. All right. They're setting up to potentially like Yogg combo us here though. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, I mean, it's just, it's Saga Cauldra. Yeah. Do you play the hammer? That's what I'm considering. <laughs> um, we know the easy part is use the, yeah. Let's activate this, put the Cauldra in, um, and then just attack for five. I don't think we put the hammer in. I think I think we wrap protection spell. Okay. 
Like, because they could haywire might there. Nope, cord for Yog. Cord for Yog, almost certainly. Yep. Yeah, probably likely to lose here, but whatever. Yeah. They have to lose a lot of life to do this. Yeah, I just don't know how we. Oh, okay. They're tagging the Stone Forge first. I mean, they lose seven life. They have a huge grip. I don't. I'm not sure how we get on the board from that point. I mean, if we draw cursed totem and they don't have an answer, <laughs> there's that. Which I think is, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. That's true. I mean, I like that does kind of fall under. They just drew a lot of cards. Part, but yeah, they might not have it. They pass. Interesting. Greed. That is really interesting. Okay. Yeah, so we do our draw. Okay. Hmm. Mm. Hmm. Weird. Yeah. I mean, they have really good control of our board right now. We can't yeah, so really assemble three artifacts. We have Ornithopter in the deck still, right? Yes. Yeah, we still have two. Mm -hmm. So what if we... Play Paladin, play Hammer, force them to kill the Paladin immediately? Go yeah, could also bolt ourselves here. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I, I think we just play pa play. Uh, like, there's no way they let the the hammer resolve with the yeah. paladin, though. So we probably do bolt ourselves. With with what intention? It represents a protection spell, which they were clearly um, oh, playing around last turn. Okay. And now play Paladin yep. and then Hammer here. Yep. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <clears throat> wow. Okay. Yeah. Draw a card. That's wild to me. That's. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, just attack for five. targeting sure so they're gonna um proliferate again on their turn and we're almost certainly dead pass here yeah yeah this is not played out <laughs> in the way that i thought like they are not taking nope. li like expected lines at all yep okay <laughs> that's just i mean that's expected gross. when they let the other one die yeah yeah okay activate jog put a counter on the paladin oh yeah do that first Are they targeting? 
just okay. Still. Like just just wolfing. Yeah. It's also awkward because they need to address this saga before chapter three. If they, assuming they don't have a a disenchant. Well, why? Because we get a needle and name Yogmoth. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So now they proliferate. I'm assuming to kill two things and make our cauldra a three three. They could also. Be <laughs> Wow. <laughs> all of them stop it i mean they've drawn a lot of cards they've yeah yeah cards. yeah i think they're just looking for a blood artist potentially yeah, man how good would solitude have been this game <laughs> pretty solid yep solitude solid dude okay bow master Yeah, it does seem like they're holding out to find it. They just need a cord. Yep. They also could be scared that, like, if they cord, we solitude the Yogg in response. Okay. You got it. You got it. Okay, so now they get to sweep the whole board. This makes sense. Yep. Sure. Yep, this all checks out. Playing it tight. Making a bunch of three threes. Proliferating our saga. Ooh, okay. Okay. I don't hate it. Weird. All right, yeah. I mean, we're just getting needle, I mean, like... Yeah, just get needle. I'm sure they have an answer for it, but that's fine. Yeah, needle on Yogmoth. Okay. This has been the most bizarre match I've had against Yogmoth ever. It's definitely up there, and they moved a discard. Super, super bizarre line. And I'm not saying bad um, lines, just like weird, unintuitive, no, bizarre. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Um. I mean, do you ever just suit up a stone forge? Like, go get a spear? No, I guess it can't be a spear. We can't get the one in the hammer and play. Why didn't they swing? Uh, I don't know. Why. Yeah, they could have attacked with the Ogmoth there, I guess. I think... I think we Stoneforge here, yeah. Yeah. just don't know what we're doing with it. Like, are we just getting a hammer and, like, suiting up a stone? Hammer, hammer doesn't do anything. I think we need to get a Shadow Spear and hope to find another Equipper. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Do you, do you want then... to play on the hand? We don't get to represent their protections. Before. No. I do, I do like playing planes, I think, though. You want to just pass? Yeah. Hmm. If we just pass and we find the Forge anew, we cannot get everything. We cannot kill them then. Is that worth? Um, I don't think so because I think if they have anything, we just lose. So I like repping because we've represented a protection spell the yeah. entire game. I don't think there's a reason to not now. Um, in my sorry. humble opinion, playing Paladin in that spot was a bad decision. Was better a free saga boy, but the construct doesn't do anything. That, that's more my concern. Like the construct did nothing in that spot. Okay. 
Uh, and we can concede here. Well, I mean, it's at two. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, whatever. Just show us the thing. And... Yep. It could be either Archon. Okay, so they get to gain two life. All right. Yeah, we're uh, pretty toasted here. <laughs> I mean, I can pick them up if you want me to just pick them up now. I don't mind. I mean, well, conclusion I, or yeah, either way, whichever you prefer. You can give it a minute. Yeah, I figured we play. We've gone so far. We might as well. You know, it's it, it, it's yeah. been. While we have been losing, it has still been an interesting match. <clears throat> it has, yeah. <coughs> yeah, if only you're running batter skulls so they could force vigor that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was really unfortunate that our seven and our six just like were not it's keepable not with like with protection spell plus totem. No. They were so close. Yep. The six, maybe the six is a keep. On the play, it's really, really tough, though. All right. Yep, yep. They're in this weird spot where these have two counters on them now. So they yep. can't, like, remove them cleanly. Oh, man. We can pack it in now. <laughs> yeah. GG's. All right. Totem so late to the party. So late. Well, it was like, you didn't want me before. I kept popping up in your opener, and you kept mulliganing me, so I figured you didn't want me. Yeah. <laughs> no, bro, you needed different roommates. Yeah, that's all it was. That's all it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a tough one, but I, I will say, again, really, it was very bizarre, very interesting. This whole league, this has been one of those, like, Twilight Zone leagues, you know? It's been like, just, like, very, very strange... Very strange. Our opponent is probably a musician. <laughs> um, what makes you say that? Uh, isn't Zildjian a like a brand of cymbal? I have like no drums? idea. <laughs> I played a lot of rock band. Okay. <laughs> well, no, I, uh, um, I have to check what you think about the hand. It is. Uh, it is exactly that. I mean, this is definitely a keep. I'm just figuring out which uh, which land we're going to play, and I think we'll just bolt ourselves on one. Okay. And like, plop this boy into play. Yeah, yeah. Drop the the little guy. Now, what's making you think we do we we bolt here? So the one of the ways we can lose is if they are a discard deck oh, and they take okay. the Amarius call, and we don't draw another land. So it's yeah. like most decks, the three life won't matter when we're on the play with a Sentinel and a Paladin and two, ha three hammers. <laughs> it, it, and you know what? MTG bot is telling us they play scam. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> it's like, it's going to be easier in Denver because I'll be able to go. You're on scam. Hmm? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, right, so they uh, sorry, real quick. Uh, Cheshire, oh, yes, uh, we have the apartment already. They actually already live in Ohio, which is why Ohio is the destination. Oh, my goodness. Um, they already live there. The, the apartment's just closer to where they work and whatnot. Uh, but we did get the keys and everything. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Apartment is uh, in our possession now. What a draw. That's real <sighs> gross. Yeah. Um, yeah. How do you want to proceed with this? Uh, I want to play. I think it's a tech. Yeah, planes, attack, play stone, stone forge, forge, go grab a hammer. Yeah. I like that. And then if they don't kill the stone <laughs> forge, we get to, if we draw a land, we get to steel shaper's gift, cauldron them. <laughs> well, if we, yeah, if we draw the land. Okay. <laughs> wow, I've never had that come up. And it's great because people will be like, yeah. Still Shaper's Gift Resolve, and you're like, all right, cool. Grab Cauldra, activate Stoneforge, and then they forget that at no point do they have priority after they said the Gift Resolves. <laughs> I'm going to be near Cleveland. No. I'm going to be in Toledo. Is this... It's Jund. <laughs> no, no. This is Naya, dude. Oh. is it? <laughs> oh, it's uh, the Assault Loam deck, if I had to guess. 
Huh. Well, my kingdom for a land. You got one. All right. So you want to um, go over that line, though? No. Now okay. I think we just go yeah, this planes, is... double hammer. Yeah. 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 This card first. Yeah. Just attack, attack with attack both. both. Yeah, it's almost certainly a salt loam, if I had to guess here. I mean, it could be, it could be, a, what's it called? Um, Zoo? Yeah. I mean, right? Like, could I, it, I don't like, think they grab awkward. not. Yeah, I guess they yeah, They don't grab that. Naya Plus. Yeah, that's fair. Creativity? All red lands? Um, so some of the assault loam decks play creativity in them. So you keep saying assault loam. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know people yeah. were picking it up now. All right. uh, I'm going to play. Oh, yeah. Here. Yeah. We'll see what yeah. Uh, it's done. It's done well in a couple challenges. Different I'm variants. Put the first one here. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Because worst case scenario, they bow master and then we just like, all right, here's another one. Right. I'm going right. to cast another hammer. Wait, no, no, no. Let's see if they pay. Oh, of course. <laughs> What is it, my first cool. day? All right, All right, now I'm going to cast now, a now, There we go. Them. Now you're dead. Yeah. <laughs> hear me out, hear me out. What if they what die? If I, what if I take the line that kills them instead of the goofy <laughs> one? Okay, so Bolt. Oh, yeah, you're right. Naya right. lands. Yeah, it's, I think it's a salt loam. Okay. <laughs> I mean, how do you want to proceed there? Like mana tides? Skills? Mana tides? Probably fine. Oh, oh. Skills. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's this that card. and the four protection spells, <laughs> yeah. and then probably cut, cut the like uh, the givers, and then probably the the thopters. Yeah. You want like okay, so like these five. Yeah. Giver, all thopters. Giver. Um, you want to do like two one with the drum? I uh, know I like the drum. I like the drums too much when we're drum, doing all these. Drums really nice when we have eight one mana interaction yeah. pieces. Yeah. So all the all the thopters. All right. Over a gift. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, What's great? Jerry T was advocating for creativity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know Rancid was talking to me about it because he's been playing some loam stuff lately. <laughs> you keep saying assault loam like it's a thing. Yeah, you keep using <laughs> these words together. <laughs> I'm I'm not sure you know what they mean. <laughs> Uh, bleh, pass. You're a grown man. You don't need my permission to throw away trash. Um, yeah. <laughs> I do need their permission, though, as I don't have the priority. But That's true. But I, I would true. like to put this stinker in the garbage where it belongs. There we go. Gentleman's agreement. <laughs> uh, now, this one I like. Yeah, this, this seems insane. This one I like. Man, but oh man, I want to keep them all though. Um Yeah. Oh. Do you think we can ask opponent? Both of us just keep saying <laughs> I think they'd be uh, down. Is that a thing? I think so. So, okay. I will say <laughs> these two for sure. And then because we have the saga, that that makes me want to keep the guaranteed third land, right? That makes me want to know like turn one play stone playing yeah. aid into turn two mm -hmm. saga stone forge. And that does not mm -hmm. leave a lot of room for the, I don't know. It makes me feel like I'm supposed to put one of these back and just keep like, this is a solid game plan. And we, we keep one of the spicy pieces. I think it's uh, the skill. Yeah. Cause this is just yeah. like, while it is, has a smaller window, it is much more broad in what it does. So yeah. Imagine if we just tag a run in six. Yeah. So it so that would mean that we don't play Saga on one. Not well, we saga, were never playing Saga aid, on one. Aid, okay. Aid. Yeah. I'm sorry. Correct. Yeah. And I think we just play planes. Oh, God, yeah. mm. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I, I like I like this even more now because we get to go like that, planes pass. Hold this up. And then, boom, and then, make a and then or man or both ourselves sentinel pass. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's hard. I know. It like is it is hard to have want, that much discipline. Yeah, you really <laughs> want to not use it here. Like you really want to yep. play one of these other cards. Sentinel also plays incredibly nicely with mana tithe. That's true. Yeah, get them to pay for it, and then they don't have the mana for the tithe. Yeah. Okay. 
So you're on just like shock sentinel go. Bolt yep. sentinel go. Yeah. And then I think if they go for the kill and we and they like can't pay for the tithe, I think we just cash it in. Okay. Okay. No no shot they're going for it. If they lay line behind it here, I will be shocked. They were yeah. thinking about it's it. It's like no, no way. They have it in it, dude. They were thinking about it. Oh yeah. Hundo. So they have Grixis and Naya, is that right? Prismo, trigger. Would you like to pay? You would like to pay. Okay. Just happens, yeah. Yeah. Because then we can, like, I guess Stone Forge is tied up. Yeah. Off Saga. Yeah, this is just creativity. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's just Saga, Stone Forge, Pass. I'm trying to figure out what we're getting. I think it's a hammer, right? Yeah. I think so. Hammer seems Cat pretty food good. Drop. <laughs> Cat is excited. It's, I don't know if you can hear new album. It, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> new album just dropped. Yeah. Cat food drop. Cat food drop. lost shit hmm. now i wish we had the blacksmith skill uh, but like trying to figure out if we care that much i mean it just happened i think we mana tithe really yeah what, what's your Make thought them, uh, it gets them lower on mana it does do that and then if they have like another tap land we just get to go like aid clonk ya. I do like clonking. That does Clonk play pretty clonking. hard in the creativity, I guess, but. Yeah, but like, whatever. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we just go Ink Moth, Paladin, Hammer, Clunkia because they gave us two artifacts, right? Yeah. We do get to do that. I, I can't believe it's happened, but this is the third time someone has get losted me to grant Metalcraft. <laughs> Which is, like, not a lot, but it's weird that it's happened that much. Yeah. Yeah. Smack. 11. And now they can only creativity for X equals 1, which <coughs> we beat very easily. Yeah. It's funny. I just had to order map tokens because somebody I play CDH <laughs> with is playing Get Lost. So I was like, damn it, I have to have those ready now. <laughs> no, 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 no. They have to have No, them. dude, we play Spell Table, man. It's online. <laughs> uh, that is all right, cool. sure. Why are at six? What? Oh, what? The what? Fuck? what? <laughs> oh, but they have something else for it, sure. Okay, oh, sure. Oh, okay. Uh, still, yeah. still feels very incorrect. Yeah. Weird. All right, whatever. Dude, we can ginger brute, double map, make it a 3-3. Three, three. Oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> I, I think we start with ginger brute map. Yeah. I think off the ink yeah. moth. I think it's fine, yeah. Yeah. I would like to explore. I'd like to explore. No, they have another bolt. Sure. All right. Right, I'm just gonna play a cigar to aid. Uh, I would probably. We could just like bolt ourselves. Well, oh yeah, if you bolt yourself, you can animate Ink Moth and explore onto it. Okay. Yeah. Sure. I think that is certainly worth it. Yes. Do you wanna? Uh, wait. What was it? Drum. Drum. Yes. Drum. Trash. <laughs> Say go. Right. Okay, they have only had five pieces of interaction. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right. 
I mean, hammer off the top. Hammer off the top. We're still hammer off the this. top. We'll see what they what they grab. Okay, Archon, that's fine. Hammer off the top, we can force a chump. I guess. Yep. <laughs> Motherfucker. Um, <laughs> I mean, we're, we're not dead, though. We just play the Forge anew. Right? Are we not dead? This attacks for... Uh, nine. nine. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Play the Forge anew. Do I just play this out? Do we lose it? Yeah, I mean, we can't beat anything, so... Yeah, and I guess they have to have a way to defend themselves from the Ink Moth. Yep. The life gain here won't save them from that. Yep. And of course, if we draw a protection spell. Yeah, we're attacking for 12. I don't think we're getting the turn. Yeah. I think they're killing us here, but. I, I would assume I, I so, correct? They are bolting us in some variety. Yep. But never done. I haven't done it yet. Okay. Now the, the prospects okay. of killing them are kind of reasonable. Hammer? Uh, okay. Uh, uh, all right, yeah, so kill yeah. Them, surge. surge. <laughs> yeah. Die? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they had to have. All right, it's fine. That makes me depressed. Game three. Dude. Oh, I didn't mean to reveal hand. Whatever. Then I'm gonna <laughs> reveal this. nothing. Oh, shit. Right. I thought we had okay. them off the top there, dude. Off the top rope. Okay, so knowing what they're on. <clears throat> yeah, now the needle uh, is less good. Needle. Yeah, not not, not about good. needle. Yeah. Yeah. Trim the needle. I think that's about it. Just trim the needle. Bring an ornithopter back in. Sure. Yeah. That's. I mean, that seems fine. Yeah, Giver's like very medium. Giver does attack down to fairy. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think I prefer the speed. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Cool. Um, I think it's fine. Yeah, turn one drum, turn, turn two one with drum with his protection. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I like it. Probably doing cauldron things. Yeah, almost certainly. Yeah, I mean they had five pieces <coughs> of interaction. So I lead on but... surge instead of holding it in response. There, there's a Teferi in play. I wouldn't be able to do it in response to anything. Yep. Correct. Nailed it. <laughs> and if they had a removal spell, then I wanted to make sure that my uh, my land was not at any point vulnerable to a creature removal spell mm -hmm. like Lightning Bolt. If we oh, drew a land inside, I'd lose my shit. <laughs> I am actual circus. Uh, all right. Do you like just like bolting here? Um, it, It's really sure. not super relevant, but like still. I, I, think I mean, I like. Do. We don't have solitude, so like exactly. This also, this also makes it like less obvious if next turn we just play a land that we're just like holding multiple points of interaction up. Yes, yeah, yeah, just yeah. the cauldron, easy, easy Calderu. 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 I like that one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My I always still just lean with the Bionicle, but I do like the spicy Calderu. Yeah, looks like to grow at a hundred percent. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm going to protect it. Yep. Using... I would blacksmith skill. skill. I'd skill. Yeah. Yeah. It's the most limited. Oh, it worked. Wow. Holy shit. That's... <laughs> oh my god. I didn't expect to get we here. We get this far. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Uh, that's interesting. But no, okay. it's still just like hold up surge here though. Right? Like it's, well, it's you get to like... anyway because the sentinel. Oh, because they get the drum. Duh, 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 duh. Mm -hmm. All right. So sentinel first then. Yeah. Like... Plop the Sentinel. I like tap the Sentinel first. Yes. Yeah, I like that a lot more. Yeah. That's a good line. And yeah. we do this, of course. Why? Why the, Why I'm doing the tap the Sentinel? Yeah. Why the Sentinel I, I, I like the not planes. having my mana source be vulnerable. 
Right. So, so I because if like they untap and they kill they, your guy, yeah. and you don't have mana, yep. and then pass through priority, <laughs> and then exile my cauldra somehow. I like to make sure that my my way yep. to protect my cauldra is is resilient. No, that's that's very smart. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I think they're going to to ferry, and we will surge in response after we draw a card, and then they can't do anything, and then we get to tag the Tef. That would be my guess. I would be about that. Yeah. Especially the part where we get a draw card there. Drawing cards is awesome. Could be a fable. Could be a fable turn. Could be. Yeah. Still draw a like card. It is a three mana turn, so I do like the prospects. And take two. Mm -hmm. Awesome. This is the Teferi. Yep. <laughs> it's cool. like I, I pull it from the stars. Yeah. Let me go ahead and surge. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Mm -hmm. Now, if they down tick, we get to kill with the S percent. No one still get to smack them. For oh wow! Years. I cannot, I cannot believe they down ticked. That was really bad. Oh, oh uh, they're dead. This is interesting. Uh, uh, you just get to first kill them of all, put it. Now, right? No, no, no. Put a stop in your damage step. Oh, because we're gonna do like the first strike, move it over. Yeah. <coughs> uh, set stop. Yeah, so play Forge Anew. So, Forge Anew here. Mm hmm. Attack them with everything. Then, yeah, I think you so, can attack the Tef because it's like free. So, it's they take five, then move it here, they take six. Yep. And, this and they die. Very... Yeah, we're killing the Teferi to send a message. Yeah. So attack, attack you, attack you. Okay, and then this is when I'm like, so, I'm the slowest clicker on earth when this is happening. Has happened. Okay, they, yep. So mm -hmm. Now move this here. And you take six. Nice, <laughs> nice, nice, nice. That's awesome. That is, uh. um, that's like, dude, that's the line with, uh, with with Forge Anew that was talked about a lot that has like I haven't gotten to like really really do that you know like and have it matter exactly that much that was awesome. Yep, that was super. It's a sick. it's a line that's like it does not come up very often. It's fringe, I think it's like, but it's good to have in your arsenal, you know. Yep. Mm -hmm. That was sick. Okay. Yeah, because so we, we couldn't have killed him otherwise. Yeah, yeah. That was that was a way to 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 kill. Um, that was super spicy. I liked that. Mm -hmm. Uh. We should talk about that league because there was, I yeah. feel like, a lot of stuff to talk about there. There was, um, there was so much. Yeah, rather than, like, send another league, I think we talk about this league here for a little bit. That was really interesting. So, like, it started off a little funky, obviously. We had a couple of matchups that were a little a little bit strange. You know, we had the we had the Enchantress. Uh, we had the Enchantress one, which was, <coughs> which was interesting. Um, that is actually one of the decks that, like, is it is fringe, um, but... Uh, it is hey what's up people yeah we were very excited to actually get to do that line <laughs> we were very excited to actually finally have the the first strike move it line um so it is one of those decks where it's like yeah i mean if they just cast the 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 bubble we lose like right like if they were able to set up the thing we don't have a ton of play to that game you saw that that game one that we lost to enchantress like they just did their thing and we died <laughs> like that was just it um but i i think generally you know that's probably that's not a matchup to be thinking about you know <laughs> like no, but um so yeah like the first the first two matches were, were not what i would call stock yeah they were very yeah. weird what was the second one um but I, Wait, it was uh the the four four color thopter play. oh yeah 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 <laughs> yeah you would but i would dude <laughs> I, <laughs> No, <laughs> violent in terms of service out here yeah. <laughs> um no so i do like that it points out that hammer can just like it can just kill people right <coughs> like yeah okay i don't really know exactly what's going on with your deck so i'm gonna kill you on turn three that's like a very powerful angle for a deck to have um and it's so it was, it was cool to to see that happen. yeah yeah that in in so that's that 
I think lines up a lot with what I was saying earlier, which is when I was talking about the thing with Spider, where I was like, oh, you just never get those free wins. You never get just the games where you just, like, kill them. And that, yeah, exactly what you're saying. It's one of those decks. That's why I, I really come around at least a bit to like being more proactive when i'm playing magic just because as much as i love control and i do love control having a proactive game plan means you get to have these like y you'll play against some stuff that's unexpected and it just doesn't matter because your deck can still execute its game plan and kill them you know whereas like if you're playing something that is much more reactive in nature you may just not have the tools to interact with their game plan and then just can't win you know you'll hit like a weirdo matchup and it's like i my things just don't work here. Whereas that's, I feel like less likely to happen when you're doing something proactive. Sometimes you're just like, yeah, yeah that's cute. Anyways, die, you know? <laughs> uh, <laughs> so anyways, uh, yeah, creativity is, I, I have seen creativity is making a bit of a comeback, which that is interesting. I, that is an interesting deck to see make a comeback. Cause it's one of those ones that kind of like faded out of popularity. I think without like a super good reason, right? Like, uh, it's really bad against the ring. I don't. Oh. I don't know what good matchups it has. To be honest, mm. um, I don't know why it's a, having a comeback. In a in a similar in a somewhat similar vein, it is a deck that just executes a pretty proactive game plan and and can just kill you. It can. I mean, like on turn four. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like the, the other problem is right. Like yeah. turn four Archon, not nearly as impressive as what the other decks are doing in my opinion. So like, I can't speak to creativity. I'm no expert. I don't know why it's having a resurgence, yeah, I don't um, but I don't know why it's I having mean, a resurgence. And I, yeah, I don't, I don't know a hundred percent why it, why it dipped. I, yeah. It does make sense that like the ring's a little awkward for it, but it's also like, I don't know, man, the ring's a card that sees play, but it's also not completely everywhere. Right. It like it was, and then beans came out and then beans got banned and ring didn't really fill the slot back again. You know, I kind of feel yeah. like it, it, it had this huge spike when it first came out, it completely fell into the shadow of beans and then just didn't like immediately come back after beans got removed. Yeah. So yeah. it's, I know it's, it's not very good against, um, it, I, th okay. I think it is good against scam. I'm pretty sure it's yeah. good against scam now. Um, it's not my understanding good against Merc tide, rhinos because a million points of free interaction or um I, I can't imagine it's amulet matchup is very good i could be wrong that yeah, seems like a weird one to evaluate um so it's, it's probably fine but yeah. not a. I i mean it's doing a but yeah. powerful thing yeah. <laughs> um but yeah okay so so creativity uh, for the for the other three matchups it was uh it was creativity yep. uh in the finals it was Yog. Yog, which is what our loss was. That mm -hmm. dude, that matchup was that matchup was weird. weird. It was so weird. <laughs> that was that was a weird match without being a weird deck. It played unlike how my experience has gone with Yog. Like there were just like a ton of lines. And it was it was a it was like a pretty known player, right? Like a pretty yeah. that was that was like a yeah, pretty he's, known uh... skilled player. And there were a yes. lot of lines being taken that I was like, what? The whole time. But, the, like, obviously it worked out, you know? And I'm yeah, I mean. It had to do with, like, playing around I, things and whatnot. Um, yeah. Like, he was super far ahead. He had the Yogg plus Undying. He just needed to make sure he didn't die. Um, so I, I think he played it very well. Um, it looked weird to us because, obviously, we knew what we were in our what was in our hand. And we had hard represented protection spells. Yeah. Um, Obviously, we didn't have shit. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, and then once he saw the opening, he took it, and we we died. And that's, I, I think he played it very well. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, and then what was the final match? I have the memory. Uh, Rhinos. Rhinos. It was Rhino yeah. against uh, Will Kruger. Yeah. Yeah, with the, uh, yep. that, was, that, was, that was interesting, too. We saw, like, the Merc Tide plan. Um yeah. He bricked off on lands a couple turns, mold the five, I think, one a, game. That was a really um, heavy force of vigor uh league. Yeah. Like even Enchantress had it. Like that was that was like a real which is which is it. I'm I'm glad we came out four one against a league that it was very dense with a card that um is often heralded as like one of the best things to do against Hammer, you know? Yeah. Well, and I mean, fair, when clearly, it did show up it did it was pretty good against us. Well, one time it did. It wasn't one time against the enchanted yeah, player. It was good one time. <laughs> it's just like it was the good card's good against us. I'll never say it's not good, but like 
their search of salvation clowns it pretty hard. Yeah. Um, and so they it's like, words. also like you can just, you can just like rebuild. So, and, yeah. and that's why rhinos is the best force of vigor deck as well as amulet, because like they force a vigor and then kill you. Yeah. Um, and so it's like, yeah, right. it's, it's fine. Um, turns out you can beat good cards against you if you know how to play your deck and you bring the right configuration. I don't know. And you play seems... your correct outs around them and whatnot. Yeah. I, I yep. will say highlights there. The the Calder thing was obviously really cool. We also had that very nice win with Ginger Brute. Um, yeah. That Ginger Cookie Brute. Monster. Yeah, yeah. That was, I really liked that one. That was, that was nice. That was really clean. That was the, that was the Merc Tide, right? Was that? Was that us beating the Murktide? We had the unblock. Uh, the rhinos. Yeah, right, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Like it, that yeah. was when they had played the Murktide. We then got that and got through it. Right. I, th I think. Mm -hmm. I yeah. To be, to be fair, like they were pretty toasted. Even if we didn't, if we just yeah, like yeah. clicked at random, I think we were winning. Yeah. Um, it's just it's satisfying. <laughs> I, I love the ginger brute. Uh, it uh, feels great. It's uh, a <clears> sweet, <throat> sweet, sweet. Because it's a cookie. Oh, I get it. See, I wasn't getting it at first, but now I do. <laughs> um the mana tides man they're interesting they are interesting because i i don't know if i have been able to successfully like sell my brain on it yet um i probably should but I feel like in a lot of my experiences, it, it does play out kind of like it did there in that last match with creativity where, you know, we have that game plan um, and we just don't find that window where it gets to do its thing. And then ultimately we just like cast it to like eat up a little bit of mana, you know? Sure. And I think that's uh, when you're bringing it in, it's the exception rather than the rule. Okay. Okay. Yep. Um, so like against rhinos, if we had had mana tithe instead of blacksmith skill, we just like counter the brotherhood's end and the game ends. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, okay. That's fair. Uh, why mana tithe over silence? Cause silence sucks. Yeah. Silence does not counter so, spells on the stack. So you have to, so actually, <laughs> actually let me, let me, let me go on a little, <coughs> little rant about yeah, silence. No, no, go off. So I have had, I don't. I don't know how many people ask me about silence. I think it's like the same two people 30 times. <laughs> um, but here's, and, and so like they sell me because they're like, oh, it's great against Cascade. Yes, I agree. It's good against Cascade because in response to the Cascade trigger, you cast silence. Sure. Um, but my problem is what about the times they just like force a vigor your shit and keep going? Like it, it doesn't do anything. Um, it's, it stops exactly a cascade spell, uh, which most of the time when it's relevant, mana tithe will do as well, except against living end, but whatever. Um, and then the other matchup they tell me it's great against is, um, is Titan because they're like, you, you make sure you silence in response to the summoners pact. And so my response is what if they just cast primeval Titan? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, so if you, if they cast primeval Titan, yeah. Then I guess you silence so you you don't die probably, but yeah. they they just have Titan it's, in play. It is cutesy against the Summoner's back. Like that is that is it, a cute line, but yes. damn man, I could see a lot of games against Titan where you just sit there with a silence in your hand, feeling like a real fool, you know. Um, and it's just like Titan Titan specifically. Okay, cool. You silence them and now they have to pay for the pact. That's powerful. Absolutely. Um, but like, unless you're also killing them, it does not matter. Yeah. Yeah. It needs so to I be think, like, like, yeah, if you get to use it as like the cool time walk, you know, yeah, one minute time walk, but that's like, rad. That, yeah, that, that's great and all, but it just like doesn't come up all that often. Um, I, th I think it's one of those instances where people see they they play it and they see it at its like highest possible ceiling and so they think it's very good which yeah. i've definitely been guilty of in the past um but then they don't think about the times when it's just a card that does literal nothing mm -hmm. well but th um, that's the thing it's good against titan in the sense that it's a time walk not as a response that sucks i agree well that's the thing though it's like not that good against them as a time walk like it's like a, a deck that cares about its lands and stuff and it still gets to also like and... how embarrassing is it you silence you go for the kill and they besage you yeah 
True, true. You don't even like, get, you don't even get to use it as a as a protection spell when they yeah. When it's a deck just filled with Besages. That's a really good point. Like I get it, and I will say like silence doesn't wholly suck. It does have its role, but and, I'm and, saying and it also Mana Tide doesn't because... do anything there anyway. It, like it's not like Mana Tide does something different, but it, but still like. Are you kidding me? I Mana Tide the Titan. No, 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 no. no. I'm no. saying in the Besage scenario, <laughs> yeah, it's not like that. It doesn't... That helps you there, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I meant yeah. specifically um, that spot. Man- yeah. Manitithe also, like, forces them to spend their mana. So, like, I don't know. It's 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 a card that plays very well. Um, it's also just incredibly flexible. So, again, it's like Scam, you get to tag an HTA, a Blood Moon effect if you need to, a Ragavan if you're on the play and you just pass turn. Um, it's an incredibly flexible card that, thankfully, we also bring in Solitude often with it. So, you can always just pitch it when it's bad. Yep. Blue for Force. Um, it's also good against Tron. Is it? Is it good against Tron? I am not convinced it's good against Tron. Yeah, I, I'm I'm skeptical. Again, and I think I kind of nailed it there. I feel like a lot of the, the the people that are are fans of Silence see it as a one mana time walk, and I do not think it is a one mana time walk. Yeah. I'm also a huge Silence gamer, man. I literally like the the CDH <laughs> deck I just built. I built because I get to fill it with Silences. Like I'm a big fan of Silence effects, but like, nah, I would be trying to do that <laughs> in modern right now. <laughs> That's just also like, just... Silence is sweet. But I think it's it's more cute than good. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Um, or you upkeep silence is the best way um, to play it outside of Cascade, in my opinion, or late game if we have a game locked up and agree it's not right. Yeah. I mean, I, again, I think you made a great point about Besaju. Just Besaju is so prevalent in the format. Like I don't, I don't know, man. Like uh, also just like like okay, I'm silence on my turn. Whatever, force you still on your turn. Like. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, it's also like um, on your turn, if you're like, I'm going to silence you and then go for it. Why not just like surge and then go for it? Yeah. It's like. It's like the same thing. I don't but... know. Oh, man. But you can't get we were, we were just looking at that ruler. <laughs> we were looking at the failure to comply. Um, okay, pull up, pull up the card so I can read it again. Yeah. I know it, the it's, first it's, half it's is like, one yeah. in a blue remand, it's like remand, but you don't draw a card. And then it's silence well, a specific card, basically. Right, but I need I need to see the exact text of comply. I don't know what the fucking syntax is for. Oh, you just you just go failure and it'll pull up for you. <laughs> Man, what a bummer! <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that magic online. Okay, reorient, reorient Turn a spell. For you. Oh, cool, nice. sorcery. Choose a name until your next turn. Your opponents can't cast spells with the chosen name. Okay, so... So you're like, rebrand yeah. your Titan on my turn. Aftermath it. Name Titan. Yeah. Sure. Um, it's still a... Like, I, I think at that point, I'd rather just play Reprieve if I want to play a two-mana spell. Yeah, I never want to play Reprieve. C- correct. Because it's <laughs> two-mana spell. Because it's a two-mana um, spell, yeah. Yeah, it's... I, <sighs> a two-mana spell that you have to, like, hold the mana up. And then, like, I don't know, man. I, I never want... In Hammer, I never want to have to hold up two mana and say go to do anything but a Stoneforge Mystic activation. <laughs> like, I don't... I don't. And even then, I'm like, yeah, fine, I just want to do it on my turn. <laughs> you know what? I would be okay holding up two mana if it was for two counter spells. <laughs> sure, which is what it usually is when it's, like, yep. these, you know? It's like surges, blacksmith skills, and mana tides. Yeah, like I don't advocate mana tide is perfect, but it it does its job in a lot of different situations, which means you can really kind of fluctuate how your mana plays. And also, like people, a lot of people have also asked, "Oh, is mana tide bad in open deck list?" No, no, mana it's tide better. Is better in open deck yeah, list. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would say I would I would absolutely make the argument that mana tide gets better with open deck list because it puts the fear of God into your opponent every time they put a spell on the stack. If you have white yep. mana open, it's like. Well, I know they run it. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. It, it, yeah. It, yeah. It's also so gross because, like, it plays so well with Esper Sentinel. And then also, it's like, <laughs> all right, well, what else is in the list? Oh, Surge of Salvation and Blacksmith skill. This is like, what? what is what it? Can you what does it mean? Around? Yeah. Dude, what having, mean? having Leyline of Thalia is so good. Leyline of Manatithe is great. Yeah. Just it, um, existing. 
damage. Yeah. No one wants to get tied. You do a lot of psychic damage with that card. You do. Um, yeah. But yeah. Uh, Steel Shaper's Gift. I like it as a one of right now. It just is a little bit more redundancy. Well, so, yeah. Uh, so, it, I mean, I know this is something you've talked about, like, on your Patreon and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, three Ornithopter versus four Ornithopter. Yeah. Steel Shaper's Gift being kind of the, you know... It would, like I, I would imagine it, it would be like this maybe if you wanted to play four ornithopter or something. I mean, what do you, what do you think about that? You, you, yeah, uh, um, I don't like it as much because when you draw multiple ornithopters, it's usually really bad. Yeah. Um, it cuts into the, when you a, draw, a little bit into the explosivity of the deck, right? Like the 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 the, the truly cracked hands do usually involve ornithopter, but yes. So you get that second or third ornithopters. Are, they're pretty bad, yeah. Um, yeah, and Steel Shaper's Gift is an easy board out. Um, it's also just a it's a hammer that pitches to solitude. Um, it's fine. Like if if people are like, I want to cut the Steel Shaper's Gift for like the needle back into the main or ornithopter, that'd be fine. Whatever. You want to talk about this card? Sure. Um, so here's where I'm at. This card might be pretty good. Um, I don't think it's very good in hammer. Um, if it had an equip cost, I would like it a lot more. Um, <laughs> but Wait. there are a couple. Yeah, it doesn't have equip cost. <laughs> when it enters a battlefield, cloak the top card of your library. Attach it to attach it to it. Equip creature gets one one can't be blocked. Wait. Okay. So okay, yeah. but you could wait. <laughs> How you can you can return it and then replay it? Okay, but, um, so you cannot and you can you, you cannot re-equip it with like pure soap powder or anything like that. But you can so you can with pure steel. Thing? Oh, you can so because you can it with literally steel. gains equip zero. Yes, and Correct. and you can put um, it on something else with aid, right? Like you can you still can. aid it to you something. Can. You can. Mm-hmm. You may pay zero rather. You cannot than forge a new equip it. cost. Yeah, because there is no. not an equip cost. So interesting, but yeah. you can pallet in it, huh? Correct. So here, here's my my place on it. It's it's blue, right? So that's the first piece, and you have to go. So I have seen some people playing white blue with solitude, no Amaria's calls, and I think I think that's really bad. Okay. Um, I think you are doing a lot of extra damage to yourself. Um, not ne- necessarily <laughs> like damage in terms of life points. Cause Amiri's call deals three, but like your mana base is a lot shakier. Solitudes are less reliable because not only are you like, do you have fewer white cards because the Amiri's calls, but you like have cards. cut white cards <laughs> for blue cards. <laughs> right. Right. Right, um, right. So the first question when you're looking at a card of a different color in hammer is, yeah. is this worth the cost of losing solitude? And, so let's let's imagine a world where solitude is, you know, not as important. Is this card good enough? The answer to that is I don't know because I have not played with the card. My my initial guess is that it is not good enough in Hammer specifically. I think it's really good in some like it, fair Stoneblade it's, decks. It's a hard card to evaluate because it, it gives yeah. it kind of gives like the um like the Batter Skull sure. vibes. You know, oh, it gives the reality chip vibes. It gives it, it gives like a mix between the two, though. Like that's what I'm saying, right? Like because it because mm. it does the it, it does the top of the library thing, but it also has that like batter skull of uh, pick it up, replay it, pick it up, replay. You know, so it, it kind of I don't know. It, it's like this weird yeah. spot between the two. Yeah, if there was like you know if if stone blade was a thing in this format, it looks like it would actually be a really cool tool for stone blade. I agree with that, but if that's yeah. not really a thing, I in think. This format, uh... I think Spike was playing a list with mm-hmm. it and he thought it was pretty good. And so like, I'm inclined to like believe Spike oh, when he says a card is good and he's trying it. Yeah. Um, but as it stands right now in hammer, I don't think it's where you want to be. <coughs> um, yeah. You want to try it and it's good. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. That was sweet. That was, that was a great league. Great league. It was really interesting. We saw some some silly stuff. We saw some serious stuff. I, you know the we saw I, I some very interesting gameplay during the the Yogmoth match. I mean during during all of my I think it was I think it was very interesting. Um, that was I was pretty happy Agreed. with that league. And I'm and I'm always happy with a four one. You know. Yeah. Good. <laughs> not gonna complain about eighty percent. I'm not gonna complain about a four one. Uh well, cool. Sweet. I guess we should maybe wrap it up here then. Yeah, call it there. You know, 
final words? Um, yeah, if uh, you are looking to pick up Hammer, I try to update matchup analysis, sideboard guide, oh, and oh, I try wait, to answer wait, a bunch wait, of questions. Wait, wait, let me What's do up? the Patreon shout out. I always do the thing. Okay. Yeah, let me. I didn't mean you had. You didn't have to do that. I, meant, I was going to do that at the end. But if you okay, want to um, play Hammer, uh, you should be a member of his Patreon, which he will link in the chat right now. Um, he has a fantastic Patreon for anybody looking to get into this deck. It honestly any skill level like if you're getting in your you know this is your first deck getting into modern or or you're a very experienced player he gives really in-depth like you know here's the you know here's why he's making these card choices every month he updates it he's got a sideboard guide ready for you for a slew of matchups for the format if you are interested in hammer at all it's like four bucks a month, man. And it is an extremely useful resource that I use myself. I highly recommend it. There you go. Okay. See, I did. I wanted to do the Patreon thing. <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, and I will be uploading this as well. I'll see if I can get it uploaded tomorrow. Cause I fly out Thursday morning to Denver for the RC. Yeah. Yeah. Very exciting. Oh, yeah. What are you going to be playing at the RC? Oh, uh, I mean, living in clearly. Yeah. I figured. <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, actually, my, my testing partners and I locked in this list about a week ago. We already submitted. Sweet. Awesome. Yeah, it's like, I, I, I am very excited um, to see uh, updates. That That's not like I a... Do. do you know if anybody's like casting that event? Uh, yeah, so it's an RC, so it will actually get coverage. Sweet. So we'll actually probably be watching. So hopefully we'll get to see you on camera. That'd be sweet. Yeah, let me... And uh, I, I have some custom tokens on the way, oh, and I'm very excited about those. Custom tokens? Yeah, let me let me see real quick. What kind of I just um, ordered all. I just did a big token order yesterday. Not custom tokens, but just to cover all my stupid commander token needs. So I'm all ready to keep CDHing, and I'm prepared this time. And don't have to be like, oh, I don't know, this is a treasure. Oh, I don't know. Uh, uh. <laughs> just start flipping the backs of cards. It's so many, dude. I got map Need tokens. Shit. I got all kinds of tokens. I got my Theros basic lands. One of each to be my floating mana token, so I can like show how much mana I have floating for things. I got, I do, I got prepared. Just you guys wait. And I went, I went non foil with my tokens. I made it. I made yeah. an extra. This is a. Uh, so I just sent you. Uh, oh my god. The, the, yeah. So she's gonna make a couple tweaks to it, but it's inkling. Uh, she's she does great work. I'm I'm very excited. I will share this with everybody here. That yeah. Is, that's oh absolutely uh, awesome. 